where Kevin Harlan and Rich Gannon are standing by. Gentlemen. Getting the big easy. As for their opponents, the Raiders. The Raiders will be back. The fire that burns brightest in his building is the will to win, and we will win. Raiders now feel they have all the pieces in place and are anxious to show just how far they have come. And they've got a new coach, Tom Cable, becomes the fourth head coach in four years for the Raiders. Well, New Orleans quarterback Drew Brees leads the NFL and the number on four offense. Hi again, everyone, with Rich Gannon, Kevin Harlan. Thank you so much for joining us. You've watched a lot of tape of Drew Brees. I know you're infatuated with this offense, but you really like what this young quarterback is doing here. Well, the first thing Sean Payton did when he took the job three, did when he took the job three years ago was find a quarterback who could help him turn things around here in New Orleans, and both have delivered in a big way. Drew Brees is a phenomenal competitor. He is a great leader, and they are not shy about throwing the ball down here in the Big Easy. He's completing almost 70% of his throws, and he's averaging nine yards per attempt. There's some pretty good numbers for the Saints. And he's got a lot of options, too, including number 25, Reggie Bush. We'll be watching a lot of him today. Well, Reggie Bush keeps defensive coordinators and special teams coaches awake at night because he can really hurt you every time he gets his hands on the football. I mean, he had the two punt returns for touchdowns against the Vikings last week. And had he not slipped, it would have been three. And he's great at setting up and using his blockers in the open field. He has unbelievable speed and quickness. All right, a tumultuous couple of weeks for the Oakland Raiders. They fired Lane Kiffin, and they promoted an assistant coach, offensive line coach Tom Cable, who's had the benefit of last week's bye to get ready for today's game. In terms of goals for this team, the bottom line is to win games in this league. And uh, this is a good football team that has to learn how to win football games. And that's really what our approach has been this last week and a half, you know, is breaking it all down for them, trying to get them to understand why we're one and three, uh, and then putting that to bed and move forward so we can turn this thing around, hopefully uh, have a good October. Well, what do you think? Well, he is well respected by his peers, but let's be honest, it won't be easy. He's now the fifth head coach in the last six years for the Raiders. All right, all that being said, that serves as our backdrop for the Home Depot tools to victory. Well, Tom Cable's first order of business as a new head coach is to find a way to finish games in the fourth quarter. They had both Buffalo and San Diego on the ropes the last two weeks, but they weren't able to close the deal. The Saints, they need to get the power running game going once again, and that's not a job for Reggie Bush, but rather Deuce McAllister. And how about some headlines today, Rich? Well, special teams may very well decide the outcome of this game. The Raiders' punt coverage unit must corral Reggie Bush and New Orleans. Well, Oakland has a trio of running backs that all bring something different to the party. This New Orleans defense must be able to stop the run today. It's a sellout in the Superdome. Sean Payton, Drew Brees, and the Saints will take on from the AFC West, the Oakland Raiders. And our kickoff is next on CBS. From the Louisiana Superdome, it's the Oakland Raiders and the New Orleans Saints. Today's game is brought to you in high definition by Sony. High definition. It's in Sony's DNA. Presenting Subway. This is the first head coaching gig in the NFL for Tom Cable. He began as a graduate assistant back in 1989 at San Diego State on the same staff as Sean Payton, a one time NFL coach of the year, now in his third season with the New Orleans Saints. The Saints won the flip. They've elected to receive. Some defer, about 50 50. They've chosen to receive. Janikowski, who's got the six touchbacks amongst the best in the NFL, will kick it off to Pierre Thomas. Undrafted out of the University of Illinois. It's the Raiders and the Saints, and here we go from the rocking Superdome in New Orleans. There's another touchback, number seven on the season for Janikowski. Out to the 20-yard line, which will bring us to quarterback Drew Brees, who leads the NFL in yards, attempts, and completions. Left guard rookie Carl Nix continues to replace the suspended Jamar Nesbitt. And with Marcus Colston out, 
still not 100%. Lance Moore will start at wide receiver. So from the 20 yard line, here comes New Orleans. Moore's on top of your screen. Carney is the fullback. And it's first and 10. And Reggie Bruce got a good block from Campbell, and then he's brought down by Jabril Wilson at about the 25-yard line and picks up five yards right there. The Oakland defense with 12 sacks in four games. They'll be missing their great pass rusher, Derek Burgess. Glenda Edwards will take his place. Middle linebacker, Kirk Morrison, leads the Raiders in tackles, and Nambi Asamoa, who missed the last game, is back in the starting lineup. It is second down and five. Got Campbell in the slot. And the pitch out goes to Bush, who was chased by Jabril Wilson. And forced out of bounds and lost, in fact, a couple on the play. Make it three, and he's back to the 22 yard line. Well, they're striving for more balance offensively. They're number one in the National Football League passing, they're just 29th in rushing. We talked with Sean Payton on Friday. He said he's very hey, conscientious, hey, hey, hey. Of, conscientious of this. They got to do a better job, a more complimentary game as it relates to the defense as well as time of possession. He's very aware of that. Stanford route will now come in as a nickelback, so five back there for the Raiders. Third down and eight. Bush was in the backfield. There's a block by Jamal Brown. Goes to the tight end. That is Campbell. There is a block on the play by Stinchcomb, and the tackle is made on the play by Tommy Kelly. It's a gain of six on third and eight, and they got a punt. Three and out on the first possession for the New Orleans Saints. I'll tell you what, this is a nice job by Jabril Wilson. Not an easy play. Taking on two guards coming up. Watch him come up here and make this tackle on Mark Campbell. Stopping him short of the first down. Good open field tackle by Jabril Wilson. Three years out of Illinois, Steve Weatherford will be punting inside here and deep back Johnny Lee Higgins. And Higgins will oh, catch the ball at the 27 yard line and here he goes. Marvin Mitchell's in pursuit. He got a block on the play by Branch. There goes Higgins on a Utah. And he was upended across the way at about the 40 yard line. So great beginning field position. Troy Evans is the guy to knock him down. It was a 46 yard punt and a 35 yard return. This takes us to the Raiders and their quarterback Jamarcus Russell played at nearby LSU drafted number one overall by the Raiders a year ago. Right guard is Cooper Carlisle returning after missing some time with an ankle and no Raider wide receiver has more than five receptions. So the tight end Zach Miller leads him with 11 and look where they begin first and 10 at the 39. And this is Justin Fargus who is back in the lineup after missing a couple games because of a groin. He picks up two yards, turtling his way down to the 37-yard line and brought down by Grant. On that defensive line, and that is the strength. Brian Young continues to replace the rookie who has injured Cedric Ellis out of USC out with an E. The ex-Jet, Jonathan Vilma, leads the Saints defense and tackles. They're missing half their secondary. Case Fahard is out. Bullets will take his place, and Randall Gay will start for the injured Tracy Porter for today and the rest of the year. Second down and eight. Good block by Green. That's caught. 25-yard line. Curry, his second catch in only four games. Bullets brings him down. A pickup of 13 yards on second and eight and a first down. And you're seeing more of this play action, particularly on the early downs with Jamarcus Russell. He seems comfortable with the one back. It's a nice job on a little corner route here. Really nice job with Ronald Curry. They're trying to get more balance offensively. The first couple of weeks they were running the ball almost exclusively on the early downs. More mixing into play action now on first and second down. Showed right there. Two tight ends from the 24. First and 10. Here's that play action you're talking about. Rich is Russell into the end zone. Incomplete. They were looking for Zach Miller in the coverage back there by Bullocks and Gay. So that'll make it second down and 10. Just what you were talking about, that play action. Yeah, they like that. And, and they have to start fast here in the Dome. I mean, they've scored just one opening drive touchdown in the last 45 games. And they've lost their last 19 games when they've trailed at halftime. I think some of the inexperience, the quarterback, the strength, that Tom Cable knows this, is running the football, particularly in this part of the field. Stewart at top of the screen. Walker to the bottom, second down and 10 with Fargus in the backfield. Justin Fargus with a block by Green. He got by Grant that was dished on by Bullocks after a gain of two down to the 21-yard line. Well, they have a pretty unique situation at running back here in Oakland. They have three very capable backs. You look at Fargus there, McFadden and Bush. That's a great luxury, and they're all capable. 
It's a long season. I think the wear and tear is incredible on these backs, and you need three up and ready to go at all times. Like you say, they got three good ones. They brought in Jason David as the nickel back for the New Orleans Saints. Third in the short eight. Fargus will remain. Javon Walker atop your screen. Third and eight for the Raiders on their first possession. Good time for Russell. That is caught. Ten yard line. And it was grabbed by Curry. Second catch on this particular possession. Bullock brings him down. Picks up ten. Earlier on this drive, he caught one for 13. And this is really going to be a critical down in this football game. Third down. The Raiders have really struggled. They're just complete 24% of them. That's down the bottom of the league. On the other side, New Orleans is completing 46% of their third downs. That's third in the National Football League. Fujita comes back in to the basic defense of 4 3 for New Orleans. In motion is Zach Miller, their tight end. And on first and 10, this is Fargus ramming his way into the defensive line. It works his way to about the six yard line. At the bottom of the pile is Jonathan Vilma for a gain of three. I'll tell you what, I really like Justin Fargus, Kevin. We saw him get hurt against Kansas City, but before the injury, I mean, this guy was running as hard as any back in the NFL. He's tough. He's physical. I think he brings a different dimension to the running game when he is healthy. And over a thousand yards a season ago. Remains in the game. They got Justin Griffith, the fullback, bottom of your screen, second and goal at the six. Russell caught by Melvin Fox. What a hit by Scott Shanley. Well, they got in a trade with Dallas a couple of years ago. So that'll make it third down and goal. Well, when you talk to the New Orleans defensive staff, they really feel like the approach is different in Oakland. You see the throw right there. And tough, tough to fit them in there tight. You see Tom Cable. He wants nothing more than to start this game fast and get a score in the opening drive. But it is different. They started out the beginning of the year. They were running the ball a lot in those games. Last week, or two weeks ago against San Diego, they threw it 37 times. Malia is in. Third down and goal. Eighth play of the drive. Russell to the end zone. Dropped by Johnny Lee Higgins. And almost picked off on the play by Roman Harper. So the defense of the New Orleans Saints will hold. And they'll relegate the Raiders to a three-point try. But going back to what you said, starting off quick and getting an early lead. Well, this is something that he's done a pretty good job of being smart with the ball, not forcing throws in there. You see that one to Johnny Lee Higgins. You got to be careful in the middle of the field with traffic, trying to stick a ball in there to tight spaces. Well, here comes Sebastian Janikowski, a 24-yard try that long in Kansas City week two of 56 yards against the Chiefs. And this to put the Raiders on top, which he does with ease. And 944 to play in our first quarter. Ronald Curry big on that drive with catches of 10 and 13 yards. Tom Cable and his Raiders have an early 3-0 lead over New Orleans. Johnny Lee Higgins got that thing off in the right way for the Oakland Raiders with his longest punt return of the season, 35 yards. Yeah, that really got him going, and that's what they need when you have a young, inexperienced quarterback on the road in an environment like this with the crowd noise. Fast starts are huge. Janikowski just had the 24-yard field goal, boots it again. He had a touchback on his first kickoff. They'll leave it in the end zone once again. He is two for two, and that will mean 20-yard line for Drew Brees and his offense. 944 in the first. 3 nothing Raiders. Raiders got a good punt return, got a 24-yard field goal from Sebastian Janikowski. Second possession for New Orleans, first three and out. This is number two from the 20-yard line. That's Bush coming low to your screen, covered by a linebacker, Thomas Howard. He'll be spying on Bush today, first and ten. Reeves has not thrown an interception against this team in a long time. It's Bush who is working on the linebacker, Howard. It's a catch and run up to the 40-yard line. A 20-yard maneuver by Bush. It'll be first and 10 up to the 40. And the Saints do a good job of moving Bush around and trying to get these mismatches. I mean, Thomas Howard, that is a bad matchup for the Raiders. There's no way Thomas Howard can stay with Reggie Bush in the open field. They're going to have to help out either with a safety or a corner. Even though he may be the fastest linebacker in the NFL. He's a fast guy, but Reggie Bush, as we said, has unusual quickness and speed. McAllister in the backfield, first and ten from the 40. Deuce McAllister, new block by Carnage. Jabril Wilson is in there making the stop. 
And Deuce, who missed last year with the knee, now playing. Well, the Saints really stubbed their toe last week, and they all started with the blocked field goal, gets returned for a touchdown. They have an interception on the low and pass outside. A snap, Drew Brees wasn't even wait, ready for it. I mean, they really PI'd. They really hurt themselves with the fumbles, the interceptions, nine penalties. It's becoming a problem. Sean Payton said it's got point of emphasis for us this week. Second down and nine, the fake pitch to Deuces. Campbell bobbling it, got a block on the play by Lance Moore, and then he's tackled by linebacker Ricky Brown at the 29-yard line. That's a catch and run of 29 yards. Earlier, a pass to Bush for 20, and just like that, deep into Raider territory, New Orleans on their second possession today as Campbell is down. He is the linebacker, Ricky Brown, on his tail on this play. And they have so many different ways of hurting you with the misdirection. You see Mark Campbell. Watch the block. We saw Lance Moore helping your buddy out down the field. I mean, this is the kind of thing you're looking for. Watch this block. Campbell is being helped off the field. He missed all of last season with the back injury. And, of course, Jeremy Shockey is out, so they need these bodies here at the tight end position. Campbell began with Cleveland. He went to Buffalo, and now he's been here a couple years in New Orleans. So Shockey, who had a sports hernia operation about two weeks ago, will not be ready for another couple weeks, although he did practice a little bit this week, except on Thursday and Friday. There is the former Giant, the four-time Pro Bowler Shockey. Robert Meacham atop your screen. In the backfield is Aaron Stucker. It is first and ten from the 30-yard line. Breeze, good block by Brown, the left tackle. That's the other tight end, Billy Miller. He's floated around the league. He's down to the 17-yard line. He was hit on the play by Thomas Howard. He picks up 13 on that play. There's another New Orleans first down. And one of the things the Saints do a very good job of offensively, they try and get everybody out in the route. They want to make sure they have at least four and sometimes five receivers out in the route. They trust Drew Brees to make good decisions. He understands the protections and he doesn't take sacks. He really reads well, doesn't he? He reads on the move. He understands and really takes off in the system. First and ten. Bush back in. Blocked by Cardi. But Cardi got a couple of belts on there. There's a flag thrown at about the 21. It's a gain of two. Right now they've got the ball spotted at the 12 yard line. And as Bush was running outside. Holding. Offense. Number 70. 10 yard penalty. First down. Well Rich, this kind of plays into what you were talking about against the Vikings. 11 penalties. 13 the week before against San Francisco. And it's these self-inflicted wounds are hurting this team. Yeah, they really are. I mean, the 24 penalties and, and Sean Payton said it's driving me crazy. It's never one guy, but we've made it a point of emphasis this week, particularly at the block and getting, getting hands outside, grabbing people. He says these officials, for some reason, have really watched us, and it's really killing us, particularly this part of the field. Raiders are going with three down linemen and four linebackers. Four in the secondary, first and 20. And the handoff goes to Reggie Bush, who zigzags his way to about the 22-yard line. And brought down right there after a gain of four on the play by Jay Richardson, who's out of Ohio State, 22-yard line for Bush. And I thought it was interesting what Reggie Bush told us on Friday. He said speed through the hole, not to the hole. He's really trying to hit these holes quicker. He's trying to make one cut and head downhill. And he's not really a guy that you think of running between the tackles. But unless they can get more from Deuce McAllister, Reggie Bush is going to have to shoulder some of that responsibility. Nickel secondary. They took out one of those linebackers. They put in Tyvon Branch, who's a rookie out of UConn. It is first. Uh, make it second down and 16. Good block by Brown. Here comes Breeze. He's got his other tight end. Billy Miller's caught two passes on this drive. Brought down on the play by Jabril Wilson. Another flag has been thrown. The gain is down to the 16-yard line. A gain of six on the play. Holding. Offense. Number 70. 10 yard penalty, second down. That's why that block was so good. That guy was a Pro Bowler back in 06. Brown is out of the University of Oklahoma. And that's just carelessness. I mean, that's two now here in the first quarter. I mean, they're going backwards. And you don't get many opportunities in these games, particularly in this part of the field. You got to be smart. I mean, when Sean Payton looks down at his playlist, he doesn't have a lot of plays on there for second and 26, I can tell you that. Six in the backfield now defensively for the Raiders. They bring in Stanford route. Second down and 26. Aaron Stecker is back there in the gun, along with Bush as they flank Drew Brees. They need the seven. 
Good block by Stinskin. That's across the middle, and that's caught by Reggie Bush. Good tackle made in the open field by Thomas Howard. His dad played for the Kansas City Chiefs years ago. A catch and run of five by Bush, who had an earlier catch on this drive of 20. And these aren't easy tackles in the open field. I mean, this is scary every time Reggie Bush gets his hands on the football. It's a good open field tackle by Thomas Howard and Kevin. This defense since week one has given up just seven points in the first half, and that's the fewest in the NFL. They've played very, very well since that opening day loss to Denver. Now five in the secondary for the Raiders. They put Morris in the middle linebacker back almost as a safety. Third and 22. Green. That's caught by the tight end. Billy Miller brought down by Morrison. At about the 12-yard line, that's a pickup of 16 earlier on this drive. Miller had a catch for 13 yards. So they're going to the tight end. Campbell now injured, but they're going to be shy. They're going to have to go for three. And like the Saints before them, the Raiders' defense holds them out of the end zone. They did a nice job. They just rushed three there, and they dropped eight in coverage. Forced Drew Brees to complete the ball underneath. They rallied for the stop. Forced New Orleans to kick three here. Rookie Taylor Melhoff was signed this week. He was drafted by the Saints, but Martin Gramatica beat him out. Gramatica has had an injury. He is out. He's also missed four of his last seven. This will be a 31 yard try by the left footed University of Wisconsin Badger Melhoff. And that is no good. Boy, they have had incredible kicking issues. Here in New Orleans, and Tom Cable is happy because his defense still has the goose egg, and Breeze with that good-looking drive comes up with nothing. Clock at 4-11. Raiders still on top. We're in the first. To get it for a second time. They got a great punt return. They took it deep into New Orleans territory. Got a 24-yard field goal from Janikowski. New Orleans has had it twice. Three plays punt. Last possession. They miss a field goal from 31. So Fargus opens up in the backfield with Griffith as the fullback. Johnny Lee Higgins the bottom of your screen. First down and 10. Play action by Russell. No one's open. Wisely throws it away. Everywhere he looked, there was coverage and good coverage at that by New Orleans. And that's a good job by that offensive line, giving him plenty of time. He sat on it. He held it as long as he could. He did a nice job throwing it away. And that's the thing that's been impressive about Jamarcus Russell. I mean, he's only completing 54% of his throws, but again, just the one interception. I mean, he's been very good at protecting the football. Second down and 10. Walker atop his screen as a receiver. And Justin Fargus. Back on the play by Harper as uh, Fargus slithers his way up to the 26 yard line and picks up five yards. And they're a lot like San, uh, New Orleans in the sense that they're trying to get more balance offensively as well. When you break them down, they're third in rushing, they're 29th in passing. And this should be a really good play action team with the way they run the ball. And that's something that Jamarcus Russell, when you go back and watch him at LSU, was very good in the play action game. Vegeta is out. Nickelback is Jason David. Lee has come in as one of the receivers. Third down and five for Jamarcus Russell, who played at LSU. Shotgun snap from Jake Crow. Good block by Green. Now they come in on him, and Walker's got the ball. He's got a first down as well. Belted by Gay. It's up to the 32. Picks up seven on third and five. And the high-priced free agent Javon Walker comes up with the first down catch. Well, you know, you can see he's really beginning to figure things out, Jamarcus Russell. I mean, the pro passing game is much more diverse, as well as the multitude and complexities of the defenses he's seen each week. But he looks comfortable in the pocket. He's gotten off to a good start. He's making great decisions. They leave David Indes, the New Orleans Saints, in that nickel, that fifth defensive back position. 33-yard line, first and 10, Justin Fargus. Play to USC and is brought down by Will Smith, a uh, Pro Bowler a couple years ago. It's a gain of five and he drags him up to the 38 yard line. Uh, the, the, the looks of Fargus are a little bit deceiving. He's a very strong, powerful running back. He is. He's a slasher who's a little bit more consistent right now, I think, at finding a lane in the zone blocking scheme. I mean, he is decisive. He makes one cut, he heads right downhill, and he is very physical in the hole. Remy Iodell comes in the game. On the defensive line, second down and five. And this is Fargus running again outside. A block there by Zach Miller, the tight end. He's out to the 41-yard line and picking up three. And they love the stretch playoff tackle with their zone scheme. I mean, it's what they do well. It's what Tom Cable brought with them 
from Atlanta. And you see they like it because they get doubles at the point of attack. They use their size, that big offensive line, and their athleticism to get up on the second level. Look at those holes. I mean, Bush, McFadden, Fargus, it makes no difference. All of these backs run the ball very well in this zone blocking scheme. Idell is out. They bring back in Young, third down and two. Top your screen is running back Darren McFadden from the 41 yard line. Fargus in the backfield and outside they go. That is caught and grabbed on the play by Curry, who is wrestling with Gay, the expatriate. He's up to the 49, picks up eight. So in this game, Curry has caught passes of eight right there. And on the first drive, 10 and 13 yards for the Raiders. And look, the ball's coming out quick. He knows right where to go with it. He's doing a good job with his progressions, reading the coverages, and he's decisive. That's what I like right now about Jamarcus Russell. Higgins and Fargus atop your screen. Now they realign. Lee at the bottom as a receiver, first and 10. Blocked by Fargus. There comes Russell. Almost picked off by Gay. And then on the deflection, almost picked off by Josh Bullocks. And a pass intended for Ashley Lilly. At about the 30 yard line, second down and 10. And part of the problem is he hasn't had a lot of time with Javon Walker and Ashley Lilly. They've had injuries. They missed a lot of the spring and training camp. So the timing and rhythm in the passing game right now, a little bit off for the Raiders. You know, Kevin, keep in mind we have a new play caller for the Raiders. Greg Knapp, the offensive coordinator, has taken over the play calling since Lane Kiffin has been dismissed. Clancy is out. Idell back in on that defensive line. Second down and 10. Vargas again get the lead block from Miller and by Green and by Griffith. And he picks up a yard up to the 50-yard line. And that will now bring up third down and nine. I think what they're what they've done we talked with Tom Cable last night the Raiders they've trimmed down their offensive package a little bit and they're really focusing in on what Jamarcus Russell does best the eight or nine concepts that he likes in the passing game and they're just rolling different personnel groupings and formations in Walker Curry and the Lee of the receivers third and nine David is in as the nickel back for the New Orleans Saints from the 50 yard line. And they stop that in mid motion. Ball start by the Raiders. Offense, number 80. Five yard penalty, third down. And that's Zach Miller who leads him in receptions. He was the number one rookie tight end receiver a season ago. And that's something you always have to deal with and handle here in New Orleans the crowd noise. I mean, it's a huge factor. It can be deafening. And it's difficult for the end men on the line of scrimmage, whether it be tackles or tight ends. It's tough to audible, and it's very hard to hear in the huddle. Raiders have made a field goal. The New Orleans Saints have missed one at the end of one. Raiders on top. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Papa John's XL three topping pizza for $13.99 and by Turbo HD by Dish Network. We begin the second quarter from the Louisiana Superdome. Sold at the Peach City today. Raiders and the Saints third and 14. Three down linemen, three linebackers. Nickel secondary for the Saints. Johnny Lee Higgins is the third receiver. Fargus offers a block on Grant. Winding up. Here goes Russell. He's got his receiver. Lee, and it's incomplete. And the coverage by Jason David, a longtime starter for the Colts. He's the nickel back. And the first punt coming up today for the Oakland Raiders. And I like the call. This this will keep these safeties and corners honest in New Orleans. I mean, think about Jamarcus Russell is rolling to his left. He has plenty, plenty of arm strength. And Ashley the Lee is finding that out. Very difficult when you're moving to your left to throw the ball that far down the field. Hang time, a big deal today for Leckler punting to Reggie Bush, as Rich told you earlier, we returned those two punts for touchdowns against the Minnesota Vikings on Monday night. This is the best guy in the league right now, Shane Lecker. Let's get a stopwatch on his hang time. Oh, fair caught already. It's signaled for at the 13-yard line. Hang time of 5-6 by Leckler on a 42-yard well-placed punt. What a battle that'll be today. Bush uh, on the special teams for the Saints. Raiders just punted after nine plays. This will be the third possession for the Saints. Three plays punt. They missed a field goal from 31 yards away. McAllister will begin in the backfield with a couple of tight ends from the 14, first and 10. Starters out there defensively for the Raiders. 
Campbell back in the game. That's the guy in motion right there. He had to leave the game about 10 minutes ago. And here's the handoff to Deuce McAllister into the secondary. And the tackle made by Jabril Wilson up to the 23-yard line and a good-looking gain of nine. Well, you look at that start from Drew Brees, 6 of 6 for 88 yards. He's done a good job spreading the ball around. You see him throwing the ball out on the outside to Reggie Bush. He's really worked the middle of the field with his tight ends, and he really hasn't had a chance to throw in those outside lanes and find some of these receivers. But he's an accurate thrower. He's a progression read guy. He's unbiased where he goes with the ball. You have to be in the right spot with Drew Brees. Bush in the game, second down and one. Reggie Bush being blocked by Brown, who whiffed on Alsamoa. The tackle made at the 23-yard line. It was made by Gerard Warren. No gain on the play. To JB in our CBS studios. Kevin and Rich, you think everybody is looking for the Wildcat offense by the Dolphins now? Certainly that was the case by Houston. Direct snap to Ronnie Brown. Hands off to Ricky Williams. Back to Chad Pennington. The defense has sucked up a wide-open Patrick Hobbs. 53-yard pass play, and it's Miami on top. 7-3. Kevin Harlan. Rich Gannon. Miami ran that Wildcat 11 times last week against San Diego. It's like they're drawing up plays in the dirt, but it's fun to see. Third and one, here comes Reggie Bush once again. Brought down by Ricky Brown and drafted out of Boston College. First year as a full-time starter. A one-yard gain by Bush, the Heisman Trophy winner. And he's up to the 24-yard line. We update another game with JB in New York. Hey, fellas, Brett Favre had actually thrown two touchdowns into the end zone. They both were called back the third time is a charm. That one to Thomas Jones. Far of his league leading 13th touchdown all tied against Cincinnati at seven. Kevin and Rich. And the Jets coming off the bye game before that six far of touchdown passes against Arizona. And he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. See where the game was slowed down and he seems very comfortable in that new system with the Jets. McAllister back in to get the first down after the 24 yard line on the third possession today for Drew Brees. Play action with the fake to McAllister. Here comes Sands outside of goes to the fullback party and reading it well as Asamoa. Loss of a yard back to the 23. Boy, there was some great words of praise from New Orleans coach Sean Payton and Brees toward Asamoah. Well, he's their best player by far. I mean, he has those long arms, great feet, good speed and quickness, and you know, he doesn't get a lot of action his way. I mean, most people have been throwing on the other side of D'Angelo Hall, but you're right. When we talked with, with the, the coach of the Saints, he told us there's no question he is one of the top one or two corners in this league, maybe up there along with Champ Bailey in Denver. Six in the secondary, second down and 11. Carney with the block. Here goes to Lance Moore. He's taken the place of Colston. Brought down by Tyvon Bridge and by Kurt Morrison. He weaves his way for 12. He's up to the 35-yard line. And Breeze continues to throw darts. He is 8 of 8. You know, this is an offense that generates a lot of explosive plays. And he does a good job spreading it around. They take a couple shots down the field each quarter to keep defenses honest. But this is a guy, Lance Moore, who's really taken advantage of this opportunity, particularly with the injury to Marcus Colston. Two tight ends, including John Ryan and Miller. First and ten, they get it right there. Back to the base defense for the Raiders. And McAllister in the backfield from the 35. McAllister with the block and Brees right on the money. And that could be a horse collar, perhaps. Moore made the grab. Tackle was made by D'Angelo Hall. It's a gain of six. He's up to the 40. Back to JB in our CBS studio. Kevin and Rich, two turnovers by Carolina have been costly. The second one here, Jeff Garcia makes him pay. Hooking up with the tight end, Alex Smith, a little two-yard toss. And the Buccaneers on top of Carolina. 14-0 in Tampa. Back to Kevin and Rich. Well, J.B. Garcia getting his first start, Rich, uh, since week one. Greasy's injured. And he, he's, I'll tell you what, he is comfortable in that system. He's had a lot of time with John Gruden the last couple of years. Second and five. Here's Breeze, caught by McAllister, grabbed by Thomas Howard, a gain of four. Surgically working their way upfield. He's up to the 44-yard line. And they began this drive at the 14. One of the problems right now for the Raiders are not really generating any pressure on Drew Breeze. I mean, he's been comfortable in the pocket. He's moving around. He's spreading it out. 10 of 10 for 108 yards. You see there the wide receivers, tight ends, and backs. And that's what he does a good job of. I mean, he's a system guy. He understands where people are going to be, and he trusts his feet. And he's getting time to throw. Third and a short one. 
Mike Carney, the fullback, will take it up the middle. He was a pro bowler at Alton a couple of years ago. He's got a gain of two to the 46-yard line. Carney with only his 32nd attempt rushing the ball in his five NFL seasons. Well, it's interesting when you watch this offense. I mean, it's obvious that Sean Payton and Drew Brees are on the same page. I mean, they spent a lot of time together during the week talking about the game plan. Drew Brees said, look, I, I meet with him on Tuesdays. I tell him what I'm seeing, what I like, and if it's not something I'm comfortable with, he takes it right out of the game plan. Great field on that defensive line. First and ten. McAllister was in the backfield. This is off to Sean Ryan, who makes the grab. He's out of Boston College with his tenth career catch right there. It is a gain of five. Down by Kelly near midfield on the play. And folks, a reminder, go to NFL.com's Game Center during today's game for real-time stats. Listen to complete live game audio with NFL.com Field Pass. Only at NFL.com slash Game Center. Good looking drive put together by Breeze. 11 of 11, 10th play of the drive, second down and five right here. McAllister in the backfield for Breeze. He blocked by Kelly. Breeze to McAllister, who takes it to the 42, brought down by Thomas Howard. That's a gain of seven. And that is another first down. So on this drive, Deuce McAllister has had runs of seven and nine yards and a drive that started back at the 14 for the Saints. And this is what they need. They have to find a way to get the power running game going. I mean, and Deuce McAllister is the guy. I mean, that's not something they want Reggie Bush doing, running between the tackles. A healthy Deuce McAllister will do wonders for this running game. Richardson now comes in for Wakefield. Chris Johnson is coming as the nickel back for the Raiders. It is first and 10, 43-yard line. McAllister in the backfield. Meach in the top of his screen. McAllister, good block by Stinchcock. And the tackle made by Wilson, among others. McAllister rushing for nine yards right there. Close to a first down to the Raider 33. And what did Sean Payton tell us? He said, we need to get balance back in the game. The way you do that is you get that guy right there, Deuce McAllister, going early. I mean, he brings a different temperament mindset to this offense. He is the guy that can move piles back. And I really think that's what that hurt him the last couple weeks. They've been throwing the ball almost 40 times a game. That's too much for Drew Brees. Henderson and Moore receivers to the bottom of your screen. Second down and one. Callister in the backfield. Deuce. Only with the lead block, and that was stuffed up. Wakefield and Gerard Warren right there. It's a loss of a yard, and they'll spot him at the 34. Callister missed go five with the knee, missed go seven with the knee. He's a four-time 1,000-yard running back, and you kind of thought watching tape, they should probably get him more involved in this offense. And that's the thing that really has hurt this offense. When we went back and watched the Vikings game last week, the inability to finish the game, the inability to four-minute offense to hand the ball to Deuce McAllister six or seven times in a row and let him bust somebody up. Here's a third and zero pass to the fullback. Carney was knocked out of bounds by Ricky Brown at about the 30-yard line on a gain of three. Make it four. Yeah, that'll move the chains once again. Sprint halftime being put together for you by JB and Company in New York. Scores, news, and highlights. That's the Sprint halftime report in our CBS studios. Bush is coming now for McAllister. 14th play of the drive began back at the 14-yard line for the Saints. McAllister's had runs of 9, 7, and 9, and a pass to the uh, wide receiver Moore for 12. Bush in the backfield, first and 10. Sands on the defensive line for the Raiders. Reggie Bush, huge hole up the middle, and then it just keeps in. Tommy Kelly read it well, along with Sands. It's a gain of a yard. He probably should have cut right when he kept going straight ahead. That's not something. He's, he's such a good guy in the hole. He understands, and he has great vision. And he loves that cutback. No huddle here by Breeze. Second down at about nine. The fake to Bush. Pass to Moore. In the secondary. And cut by Hall. Down to the nine. A 20-yard strike to Moore, who earlier on this drive caught one for 12 yards. Moore was undrafted out of Toledo in his third NFL season. And these are the layer throws. They can hurt you with the vertical throws, but layer throws, you see Lance Moore, they're working across the formation. First and goal, this is Bush. Got a block from Carney, and then is tripped up and brought down by Howard at about the seven. On a gain of about three by Reggie Bush. This is an area of the field 
where Drew Brees has been spectacular. In the last two years, he's thrown 27 touchdowns down here, just one interception. That came on a tip throw last week against the Vikings. Injury timeout for Wilson. Brees was the NFC Offensive Player of the Month for September. Look at the start today against the Raiders. I got a big kick out of what Sean Payton told us on Friday. He said he's like Ferris Bueller. They all want to follow this guy. He is a phenomenal competitor, and he is a great leader for this football team. Branch is in for the injured Jabril Wilson. 17th play of the drive, second down, and goal on the seven. Push in the backfield, Campbell on the move. Good block by Nix. A whiff by Nelson. A big time hit. It's at about the seven yard line. He was whacked by Brown, hit by Thomas, grabbed by Branch. No gain on the play. And Brown will leave. Tell you what, this is not what Carney wanted. A late throw. Drew Brees never really feels the linebacker, but watch this hit right here on Ricky Brown. I mean, Ricky Brown got right up and he started heading to the sidelines in a hurry. Jabril Wilson will come back in so five in the secondary for the Raiders third and goal from the seventh more in motion Bush in the backfield Breeze good block by Campbell now they come through flag thrown Stanford Rock is watching Bush out of the backfield got the flag down about the eight yard line offside defense number 58 this is to the goal. Third down. Boy, so these penalties just kill you in this part of the field. Kalimba Edwards, you have him down. Third and seven. Now, all of a sudden, you give Drew Brees in this offense another shot, and it'll be third and two now. I mean, you just got to be smart in those situations. You got to watch the ball. Drew Brees is a master at using the hard count. Two tight ends, top your screen. Bush in the backfield, third and goal from a four. Richardson and Ward have come back on that defensive line for the Oakland Raiders. It's Bush. He blocked by Nixon Carney. He will climb into the end zone for a three-yard touchdown run. Reggie Bush. That was the perfect drive, converting on third down, eating a lot of clock, and wearing out the Raiders' defense. And watch the kickout block by Mike Carney on Nandi Osmo. I mean, that's that's the block that really sprung Reggie Bush. But I'll tell you what, that drive, Kevin, the time of possession is becoming a factor here in the first half. 18 minutes and 20 seconds of time of possession for the for the uh, Saints to 7:55 for the Raiders. Ricky Miller for this to field goal earlier in the game puts this through and it's 7 to 3. New Orleans. Drew Brees is 14 of 14. Reggie Bush has another rushing touchdown. His second of the season. Bush has had a three yard touchdown run. He felt he slumped a little bit last year, Rich, in his second season. Well, you know, he, he went back and really realized that he had to be here in the offseason, commit himself to the program, spent a lot of time with Aaron Cromer in the meeting room learning about this system and how he can get better. Well, after with a short kickoff and out of bounds at the five. So he has missed a field goal. He shanks one right there out of bounds. And the rookie who was brought in this week taking the place of the ineffective and injured Martin Grammatica. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball be placed at the 40 yard line. We'll put the ball There's at the no 40 yard line for the Raiders. And that's Sean, a tough one. And Sean Payton told us every once in a while he hits a three or four iron and just shanks it. We've got to get that straightened out. Number one, baby. Number one. Yeah, you're right. Woo! Three yard touchdown run moments ago by Reggie Bush. And taking over with the kickoff out of bounds, 40 yard line. First and 10. Fargus in the backfield. McCray and Idell begin this series in the defensive line. And this is McFadden. He runs ahead. They just took out Vargas and put in McFadden, who busts his way up the middle and is brought down by Clancy on a gain of seven to the 46. And Tom Cable, who was a head coach and lineman coach at Idaho, then for a couple years at UCLA, he was with Atlanta in 06 in the offensive line coach this year and last with the Raiders, second down and three. McFadden remains in the game. 
See the midseason coaching change is not very good. Just 22 and 45. Fake to McFadden. Good block by Harris. The left tackle. Good time for Russell. He's going to tuck it under and go upfield. And that got his horse by Andrew mm -hmm. He's got the first down run down to the 42, picking up 11. He needs to do more of that because he can do that. That's what I like. I mean, this is an athletic guy. He's strong. He has the great size. He's 6'6", 265. We know he's got the tremendous arm. He can make all the throws. But, Kevin, as you said, this is what I like to see him do more. Use his legs. He's great in the open field. He can make people miss. And at 265 pounds, he can run some people over. McFadden remains in the backfield. It's first and 10 from the 42-yard line. First round pick here in McFadden. Two-time Heisman. Runner-up. Clancy makes the stop on the defensive line. There's no gain on the play. They stay at the 42. I thought it was interesting when we sat down and visited with Tom Cable last night. He said, listen, I wrote myself a letter when I was fired from the Idaho job. And it said, be yourself and do it your way. And that's what he's going to try and do here in Oakland. That'll be important to try and do it his way. He just took a timeout right before the two-minute break, trying to keep his offense on the field, down 7-3. to three. Raiders in the midst of their third drive. They've gotten a field goal, and they punted. Second down and 10 coming up. Look at the time and possession in this second quarter. It's been huge. And the other thing is the kickoff coverage unit for the Saints has really hurt them. They had the one big return to open the game, and then that last kick there gave the Raiders the ball at the 40-yard line. Starting defensive line is in the game. There was a nickel back in David. And this on that second and 10 handoff was McFadden. It was brought down by Jonathan Vilma, the former Rookie of the Year on defense in the NFL. We've reached the two-minute warning. 7-3 Saints. Sprint halftime coming up next from New York. JB and Company News scores highlights all from New York after this. First half, third down and seven. Three defensive linemen, three linebackers, nickel secondary. And the backfield is Fargus and Griffith. Russell looking for Walker, who is covered by Jason David. Incomplete pass. So it would be a 57-yard field goal try, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Here comes Janikowski. And he just, this is something he's got to do a better job of when he's flushed, when he's on the move, when he gets outside the pocket. He's got to give the receivers a chance. His accuracy is a little bit of an issue right now. It will improve once he gets more comfortable with this system. He has the longest field goal in the NFL this season at 56. He's already made one from 24 in pregame. He was making them from 58. This is 57. Nope. Wide left. Well, now you give the Saints the ball almost at midfield with a minute 48 to go. Plenty of time for Drew Brees and the Saints. By Frost Brewed Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, your beer is as cold as the Rockies. New Raider head coach Tom uh, Cable had an interesting decision there. Try the 57-yarder, but if he misses, you give it back to them at the 47. He chose to try the field goal, which they missed. Now look where the Saints begin. It's really a double-edged sword. Now you give the Saints the ball back. Drew Brees in this high-powered offense with all three timeouts in a short field. Route is the nickel back for the Raiders. First and 10 for Brees, who has not missed a pass today. Good block by Stinchcomb. That's a pass caught by Lance Moore. Locked down by Michael Hook, the former number one pick out of Texas. It's a gain of 17 yards, and he's down to the 36. I'll tell you what, Der Devery Henderson, he doesn't have a lot of catches. He had 10 coming into today's game, but a 31.7-yard average. When they throw it to him, it's usually a big chunk down the field. Bush is in the slot, first and 10, 36-yard line. Three timeouts for the Saints. Good time for Breeze. Down the middle, cut. It's more once again. Backed down by Jabril Wilson, the catch at the 17, a pickup of 18 yards on that one. I'll tell you what, that was a phenomenal throw. I mean, that was good coverage. The linebacker was there. They had a safety over the top. He does a great job squeezing that one in to Lance Moore. Timeout, 111 to play before halftime. Two timeouts remaining for the Saints. And high above the Louisiana Superdome, the MetLife Blimp providing today's aerial coverage. Look for the MetLife Blimp as we team up with CBS for more coverage this fall. 
Two timeouts remaining for New Orleans. A missed field goal by Janikowski. Let them start at their 47. Now at the 18, first and 10. And if I'm Raiders defensive coordinator Rob Ryan, I have to get to Drew Brees. I mean, right now, he is too comfortable. He is in a rhythm. 16 of 16 for 171 yards. He's got too much time in the pocket right now. Bush in the backfield. Nickel secondary for the Raiders. First down and 10. Bush. He got by D'Angelo Hall. Run out of bounds by Morris. It effectively stops the clock after a gain of about two to the 15-yard line. And very, the clock few, at 105. and very few backs can do that. Bounce runs to the edge when you have corners out there trying to make tackles. And that's one of the things when you break down Reggie Bush, there's times where he's a little bit indecisive and he has that the willingness to want to bounce everything to the edge. Sometimes the great backs, they fall forward in those situations, and instead of losing two or three, they get back to the line of scrimmage or even gain a yard or two. Meacham is the third receiver, Bush in the backfield. Second down and eight. Breeze is at eight different receivers today. 16 of 16. Here he goes again to Bush, guarded by John Alston. No penalty on the play. And Alston, who is a fourth linebacker who came in on that particular play and plays that kind of a defensive position on the team, makes it third and eight. And I'm surprised that the Raiders are leaving these linebackers one-on-one -on -one with Reggie Bush. But what's happening is the Saints move them around so much, whether they flank them out wide, they put them in the slot. Very difficult to match up with them. But you see a better throw there probably gets it done by Drew Brees. Bush remains. Six in the secondary. Branches come in third down and eight. Here comes the blitz. Reeves. Throws it away. It was interesting because the blitz came on from Branch. And Breeze looked like he ran out of some real estate. And I don't know if Breeze was blinded by it or not. There's a late Off flag. Number nine. And it's on the New Orleans Saints. Ten-yard penalty. Loss of down. Fourth down. Well, that really worked in the Raiders' hands very well there. Well, I, I think that Drew Brees was anticipating Reggie Bush doing something different there. I think Reggie Bush thought it was a blitz. It was going to be hot. He broke off his route. Didn't realize that Drew Brees had it picked up, had it blocked up, and had extra time so that he could have finished that route. So this will be a 44-yard field goal try by Melhoff, who has missed already today from 31. He has kicked a kickoff out of bounds. And the sixth round pick out of the University of Wisconsin will get this through. They get three, and they lead 10 to three at halftime. And here comes the crowd. This has been a very interesting story, this kicking story. A couple of years ago, they had John Carney. They got rid of him. They signed free agent Alinda Morin. Then Mari got a hip injury last season. They signed Martin Gramatica, who finished well, came into this season. But then Gramatica missed a couple of late game field goals early this year that may have given the Saints a win. He also had a groin injury. And this kid, who they cut in preseason, was brought in this week with Gramatica put on the injured list. Well, on week three's game at Denver, late fourth quarter, Gramatica miss from 43 and the two-point loss right there then Monday night just a couple days ago against the Vikings he missed a 46 yard attempt with two minutes left he also had one blocked by Winfield that was returned the other way 46 yards for a touchdown and nothing drives coaches crazier than missed opportunities in the kicking game and that's something they got to get straightened out this is too good of a football team too explosive a football team for them not to be able to count on their kicker to be able to kick some clutch kicks down inside the red zone. On that drive, a 17 yard pass to Moore and an 18 yard reception by Moore as well. He's looked very good. Now, Colston, who had some thumb surgery, may come back next week. He practiced this week. He was questionable coming into the game, but they deactivated him beforehand. And Mel Hoff, with a little bit of confidence, now gets this downfield. And Johnny Lee Higgins has had a couple of long kickoff returns this year. Comes up right now. He was tripped up by Reese. Lost his footing at about the 23 and bounds his way to the 25. Well, Saturday on the Home Depot SEC on CBS, Houston Nuts, Rebels of Ole Miss will battle John Parker Wilson and the Alabama Crimson Tide. The excitement begins with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman on the TIAA Cruff College Football Today. LSU losing to Florida last night down in the swamp. How about Missouri losing to Oklahoma State? 
The number five Texas beat number one Oklahoma and Dallas yesterday with two timeouts. First and ten from the 25 for Russell. That inside is Fargus. Nickel secondary for the Saints. Russell caught by Johnny Lee Higgins. A record setter at UTEP, and he's all the way down to the 40-yard line, chased out of bounds by Randall Gain. A 35-yard catch and run. First and 10 Raiders with the clock now at 35 seconds. This is just a blown coverage. I mean, this is just an under route. They completed to Johnny Lee Higgins. Higgins. There's no one even around them. There's no linebackers there. The safeties look, there's some confusion there. And you can see right there, Jonathan Vilma heading back towards the middle of the field. There should have been someone in that weak side flat. Starting defensive line out there for New Orleans. David is the nickel back. First down and 10 from the 40. 45 yard catch and run by Higgins. He's out of the game right now. They got Lalee, Walker, and Curry as the receivers, and Fargus in the backfield. And here's Russell. A Fargus block. And that's intended for Lalee. And a flag thrown on Randall Gay at the 18 yard line. Randall Gay is starting today because of the injury of Tracy Porter. Off that, number 87. Oh. 10 yard penalty first down that was on the lead the ex Denver Bronco who was let go in San Francisco's training camp and signed just before the start of the regular season by the Raiders this is a good job they're going to run slow go see it's a staple throw in this offense and watch Randall Gay he does a great job not only recognizing the coverage but watch him jump in front of the route I mean, that's just a good experienced veteran play by Randall Gay Still five in the secondary for the New Orleans Saints. First down and 20 yards to go from the 50. Same wide receivers and Fargus in the backfield with Jamarcus Russell. There's a block by Harris and a pass incomplete. They're looking for Lalee. And Roman Harper was defending on the play, the former second round pick out of Alabama. And he is a little shaken up at the 37. I'll tell you what, this ball might have knocked the wind out of him. Watch this. Watch where this hits him. I'll tell you what, it's impressive when you watch Jamarcus Russell spin the ball. I mean, he'll knock the wind out of you now. If you don't catch the ball with your hands, watch this. Oops. I'll tell you where it hit him. It didn't hit him in the stomach. A little bit lower than that. And that's why South. those and that's why those guys play defense. South of the Mason Dixon line, second down and 20. Again, the nickel and three receivers set. They dump it off. Fargus tops the ball. Jonathan Vilma was all over that play. The big time free agent signee from the New York Jets this past offseason. Vilma is every place and playing in a more familiar defense now in a 4 3 than up at with the Jets when he was in a 3 4. Yeah, he likes the 4 3. He's a very instinctive player. You talked about route reading, understanding concepts. He reads the screen early on. He beats the guard out there and he makes a great tackle. He's leading this team coming in with 51 tackles. Regina is on as a linebacker. There's a two right there. And then, of course, David is the nickel back and he remains out there in this third and 20. Johnny Lee Higgins is in the slot at the top of the screen. Good time for Russell. The tight end, Zach Moore, out of Arizona State and tackled from behind by Randall Gay. He's at about the 41 yard line, picking up 10. And a timeout taken by New Orleans. It is a defensive timeout taken by the Saints. So they have one remaining. And the Raiders catch a little bit of a break here. Now with 11 seconds remaining and at the 41, they're gonna, they've already made the decision. They're going to bring out Janikowski. Yeah, you just can't give Drew Brees in this offense another shot. I mean, they're just too good. But I'll tell you what, the Raiders are going to have to score some points in this game. I mean, New Orleans has gone six straight games coming into today's game, scoring 24 or more points. The Raiders, on the other hand, have had eight straight games where they've scored less than 24. So you got to go toe to toe with this New Orleans offense. I mean, this is a high powered, high scoring offense. You can't go into the halftime just scoring three points and expect to have a chance here in the second half. So here is Janikowski missed the 57 yarder before in pregame warmups. He was knocking him in with ease from 58. This will be a 59 yard try. And if he makes this, this will be the longest field goal in the history of the Raider organization in Los Angeles and in Oakland. He's got plenty of leg. It's whether or not he can get some accuracy down the middle. 59 yards. Will it curve in? It will not. So he's missed from 57 and 59 the other day right before halftime. Lane Kiffin had him out there trying a 76 yard try. Both of his misses have been to the left. For Sebastian Janikowski. Now in the pregame, we were charting right here, and this is a 50, 58-yard try. And you can see he got that in with a he's, lot to spare. 
Yeah, you know, a left-footed kicker now, a lot of their misses use the arm to the left. Looked like a good snap and certainly a good hold by Shane Leckler. He's in a lot of them, too, from 50 and above. I think that's just his first miss this year. Am I, am I right there with that? I mean, he's been pretty accurate. Well, he, missed so a, he missed a 57 yarder and a 59 yarder. Yeah, I'm talking about coming to today's game, though. I think prior to this. Not, he was game, 9 of 10. 9 of 10. But the, but the miss was at 76 yarder. Got it. So you're right. You're on target. Pushes in the backfield here. Seven defensive backs out there for the Oakland Raiders. Breeze. Billy Miller's got the ball. Can they call the timeout? He oh, beat Thomas Howard. They did not get it in time as Miller. Catches the 25 yard pass. Wow, that's amazing. They just missed it by a second. That's why this offense is so good. That is the end you of can the just first never half. let your guard down. Here come the booze, but we're going to watch the clock here and see if they get the timeout before a 25 yard completion of the tight end, Billy Miller. And Drew Brees did a great yeah, job there. He's down. I'm sure he's signaling for timeout. There had to be at least a second left on that clock. Drew Brees was very aware of the situation. Right after the throw, he turned right back around to try and signal the referee. And Sean Payton is really ticked off at referee Terry McCauley, who was a referee in Super Bowl 39. A touchdown run by Bush in a 10-3 New Orleans halftime lead from the Louisiana Superdome. Flip and so things will be reversed. The rookie Melhoff has a teed up at the 30 yard line and deep back for the Oakland Raiders on the left, Johnny Lee Higgins, whose hand returns this season of 58 yards against Denver and 69 yards against the Buffalo Bills. And our second half is underway from the goal line. This is Higgins. And Utah. Oh, he was hit hard by Sama Young. Young leads the Saints in special teams, tackles a 16-yard return to the 15. It'll be first and 10 for the Raiders. What do you think of Jamarcus Russell's first half? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, he didn't get a lot of opportunities. His numbers aren't great, just 6 of 15, but I thought he looked sharp. He made some good decisions. He's taken care of the football, and he is a tough guy to sack. I mean, he's got that, that height, that strong arm, that great vision. And he is a physical player back there for the Raiders. Fargus begins as the featured running back on first and ten. Justin Fargus, lead block by Green, lead block over there by Justin Griffith. It's a game of seven, and he's up to the 22-yard line and brought down on the play by Charles Grant. So a new play caller for the Raiders. It was Lane Kiffin before the head coach. He was let go. And now longtime coordinator Greg Knapp is calling the plays. Yeah, and this isn't his first time. I mean, he, he did it in, in uh, New Orleans. I'm sorry, he did it in San Francisco three years. He did it with the Atlanta Falcons for three years, the offensive coordinator play caller. So this guy is a veteran play call in the league. Second down and three. Fargus again tries to bang his way inside. Grant right there, Kendrick Clancy. And not much of a game. Called a yard up to the 24-yard line. And, you know, they, they had some good starting field position, but they just really weren't able to do much with it. You know, some pretty good drives, nine plays, nine plays, field goal. They missed a couple long field goals, but uh, not a lot of production when you consider they only had the ball four times in the first half in less than 10 minutes. Linebacker Fujita has come out. They put him in nickel back. That's Jason David. Higgins is in the slot. Third down and two. Lee is also a receiver. Fargus at the side of Jamarcus Russell. Almost picked off by David and tended across the way for Javon Walker. Quick three and out for the Raiders to begin the second half. And this is one of the problems they have with the passing game, the Raiders. They have a lack of production at the wide receiver position. Almost a third of their completions, less than a third of their completions, are to wide receivers. And when you think about the numbers, I mean, Johnny Lee Higgins was leading them coming in with five catches. And the other three receivers, the other starting receivers, have a total of 12 catches. Not a lot of production from the wide receiver position. Leckler will punt to Reggie Bush, who is stationed back about the 23-yard line. Conda with the long snap. Not very high, not very long. Here comes Bush. Hangs on a free five. Trevor Scott. Was down there along with John Alston, a reserve linebacker, who make the stop on a nine yard return, a 40 yard punt. 13 28 to play in the third. Another look at Drew Brees. What a great start for this young quarterback. More beginning uh, field position, which is favorable for the Saints from the 45 here. First down and 10. 
McAllister in the backfield. Starters out there defensively for the Raiders. Juice McAllister. Tommy Kelly kind of goes in there and makes the stop. There was a lead block by John Stinchko, and it's a gain of four up to the 49-yard line. When you look at the first half possessions. They need more of these right here. 18 of 18 plays, 86 yards, and a touchdown. That's the kind of drives they're looking for, and it's probably a frustrating feeling right now for Sean Payton and Drew Brees. I mean, they had, they had 239 yards of total offense. They moved the ball at will against this Raiders defense, and they only had 10 points to show for their efforts. Stecker and Bush are in the backfield. Now Stecker becomes a receiver on the near side. Second and six. Nickel secondary. Route is the nickel back for the Raiders. Good job to Bush. Lead block by Brown. Tackle made on the near side by Kirk Morris. And a two-time or make it by Thomas Howard. It's a gain of five on the play. And Morris and both. They both collapse on him. And the gain is down to the 47-yard line. Gain of five. I thought it was interesting when we sat down with Reggie Bush on Friday. You know, he said he went and talked with Sean Payton in the offseason. He said, what do I have to do to become a great player? And Sean Payton said, first thing you got to do, you got to spend more time here in New Orleans in the offseason. The other thing is, you have to be a big weight room guy. And that's something that Sean Payton learned from Bill Parcells, squatting, cleaning, taking care of your body so that you can take the pounding throughout the course of a 16-game season. Bush is in, third and two. There's the pitch. The lead block by Brown. They got the first down and more. And that horse power tackle, and it's made by the Angelo Hawes. Familiar in these parts. He played in the same division with Atlanta. They traded for him. Did the Raiders this past off season a gain of five to the 41? But there was no yellow on the play, so the horse collar wasn't called. And this is what he likes. He likes to toss sweep and just watch that hole right there. And look at his eyes. His eyes are downfield. He does a great job setting up the blocks and hitting the hole very decisively. Rookie Trevor Scott has come in the game and plays to Jay Richardson at the left defensive end. Still the nickel back route remains first and ten. Breeze. That is caught. Moore with the grab. Tripped up on the play by Jabril Wilson. It is a gain of five. Make it four on the play. They'll spot the ball for 33. This Moore's been terrific today. He's had catches of 12 yards, 20 yards, 17, 18, and right there he picked up four. Tell you what, Drew Brees is like a surgeon out there right now. I mean, he's dissecting this Raiders defense, the secondary. I mean, he knows exactly where to go with the ball. He does a good job pre-snap, previewing the front, looking at the coverage, and he understands concepts in the passing game very well. Callister is back in, gets the top and the four defensive back for the Raiders. Look at him, The defense back to the 24, picks up nine the hard way, and brought down on the play by Howard, the linebacker, and Morrison. And this is what we talked a little bit about in the first half, the physical presence in the running game that Deuce McAllister brings. Wow. I mean, he moves people, he moves piles, he moves people back in the hole, and he's always falling forward at the end of runs. So gain of nine right there. McAllister will stay in the backfield. Two receivers, Henderson atop your screen, more to the bottom, it is a first down. Big pitch, here comes Brown on the blitz in the... Reception made for the second time today by the other tight end. That is Sean Ryan. It is a gain of two, and he is down to the 22-yard line. I thought it was interesting when Sean Payton was talking about Drew Brees, and he talked about the fact he's got a great lower body, and he's explosive, extremely athletic. He was telling us about as a junior tennis player, he wound up beating Andy Roddick. I mean, he generates a lot of velocity with his throws by using his entire body. Very sound mechanically. Three defensive linemen, four linebackers, four in the secondary, second down eight, seven play of the drive. That's McAllister in motion. Oh, confusion right down here. Breeze outside more. It's out of bounds by D'Angelo Hall. He's got the first down. Into the 15-yard line. Let's see where they spot that ball. Matt is going to be a little bit shy, maybe by the length of a football. And he picks up seven on the play. Hall knocked him out of bounds. One of the things the Raiders have really struggled with in the past is you see the motion go. Look at the miscommunication here. They're trying to figure out. They're trying to sort out who has who. They want up moving three defenders outside the box, and they're short. Communication is a, is a problem when you have so many personnel groupings, so much shifting, and so much motions that it makes it very confusing for a secondary. Fourth linebacker, Alston, is left. They brought another defensive lineman, third down and one. Callister in the backfield on the card at the lead block by Carney and by Evans. And he finds out his way for a first down. He was hit 
at about the 12-yard line and brought down the play by Morrison on a gain of four. Deuce McAllister. Real favorite down here, a four-time Pro Bowler out of Ole Miss. Every time he touches the ball, the, the stadium erupts with Deuce, Deuce. And I mean, he has been a, a productive player for him for a number of years. No on first and ten. Breeze. Here comes Warren. There goes the pass to McAllister. He was hit by Sands and wrapped up on the play by Tommy Kelly and by Richardson. The gain is three down to the nine. You know, there, there's been this talk that the Raiders run out of gas in the fourth quarter. They, they look tired here in the third. This defense for the Oakland Raiders has been on the field so much. Well, you look at this drive. I mean, the. They've been on the field a lot, and we talked about that 18-play drive for the touchdown in the first half. That's what the Saints do to you, and it makes it difficult. But the big point of emphasis for Tom Cable was they have to learn to finish games in the second half. Three defensive linemen, four linebackers. Alston is the fourth, second down and seven. Boy, Drew Brees, this is what he is great at, getting in and out of the best possible play based Two on the Two tight ends. Here's McAllister offering a block in the pass outside intended for more of the coverage by D'Angelo Hall. So now it will be third down and seven. And the Saints, what they have is they have a kill package. And a lot of times they'll call two plays in the huddle. And what Drew Brees will do is get up the line of scrimmage and preview the front, the coverage, and get him in the best play. The, the benefit of that is you've already told the offensive line, the receivers in the back, what the second play is. So a lot of times they'll call a run and they'll kill it to an auto a blitz beater, anticipating pressure. It's an efficient way to operate as an offense. We have the line, four linebackers, third down and seven. Stecker was in the backfield against the call. There's a block by Evans. And there is a beautiful block downfield by Goodwin. An eight-yard touchdown pass by Drew Brees. As Stecker had an escort into the end zone. Boy, that was an impressive drive. 11 plays, 55 yards. They finish it off with a nice screen pass to Stecker in the flat. And he does a nice job turning up field following those blockers to the end zone. Stecker with his first touchdown reception this season, just the third of his career. Now off with the extra point, 17 to three, the Saints, who come into today having lost three of their last four. Breeze throws his 10th touchdown pass of the year. Just saw a little dump off touchdown pass, Breeze to Stecker. Time of possession, Rich. The Saints have had it for 25 minutes and 10 seconds. The Raiders have had it a little over 12 minutes in the game. Their defense is gassed. Here's the kickoff by Melhoff. And Johnny Lee Higgins, a record setter at UTEP from the 10 yard line. Hit by Marvin. Got away there. And hit on the far side by Reese. And makes that play. Marvin Mitchell had the first shot at him. 18-yard return. Here comes Jamarcus Russell. 7.35 in the third. Jamarcus Russell played his final game at LSU in the Sugar Bowl. And they beat Notre Dame 41-14. He comes back today. His uh, team is down 17-3. Well, you know, the former number one overall pick making just his sixth career start today. I think because of the holdout last year, I mean, he's really, this is really like his rookie season, but you can see he's getting more comfortable with this offense each and every time out. After the Braves touchdown pass and the subsequent kickoff from the 28, McFadden in the backfield, first down and 10. Good block by Harris. That is incomplete. They're looking for Lalee. They had Gay down there, and there is a flag at the 28 yard line. It's a pretty important drive for the Raiders. It's a critical drive. I mean, the defense has been on the field most of the game. They have There's to find no a way to get a score here. Bowling. Second down. They say there was no foul on the play. And tomorrow it's the most shocking Miami of the year. Don't miss the episode everyone will be talking about. The new CSI Miami. That's tomorrow at 10 9 Central on CBS. With Caruso. Second down and 10 from the 28. Curry to the bottom of his screen and Walker now will go even wider. This game could get away from them if they can't score here. Second down and 10. And McFadden in the backfield. The Dope Walker Award winner brought down by Jonathan Doma. It's four yards, moves the pile, make it five. He's up to the 33 yard line. A lot of hope riding on McFadden, but again, getting back to McFadden and, and, and also with Jamarcus Russell. I mean, a lot of the future of this entire franchise 
wrapped up in the first-year player McFadden and the second-year quarterback Russell. Well, I think that's one of the positives when you look at this organization. I mean, these are two players that you can kind of build your system around. Jamarcus Russell, he's, he's got a ton of potential. And we've already seen in just four games what Darren McFadden could bring to this offense. The explosiveness, the ability to score every time he touches the ball. Marcus is in. Nickel secondary with David. Vegeta is out. Third down and five. Big play right here for Russell. Good time. Intercepted. Picked off by Jason David. And the ex Colt takes it downfield to about the 17-yard line. A 20-yard return. That's only the second interception thrown by Russell. But for Jason David, his 12th career interception, his first of the year, and he has just given his Saints a welcome opportunity at the 17. And I don't believe Jamarcus Russell ever saw Jason David. You see, he's got his eyes inside. He's late coming back to Ashton Lee, and he never feels Jason David sitting there waiting, baiting him to throw that ball out to the flat. Now the Saints will begin it at the 17-yard line with Reggie Bush in the backfield with Carney. Bottom of your screen is Moore. Sands on the defensive line for the Raiders. Bush blocked by Carney, got by Brown, and hit on the far side by D'Angelo Hall. And the gain is to about the 15-yard line on a pickup of about two yards for Reggie Bush. Well, they, they want to do everything they can to get him the ball and let him go to work in space. I mean, the thing that I really like about Drew Brees is he gets him, he throws the ball a lot to him at or around the line of scrimmage. You're talking about Reggie Bush. I mean, he has 199 receptions in his first 33 games. It's an NFL record. He is unbelievable in the open field. Second down and eight. That's more in motion, and Bush remains. The fake to Bush. Breeze, good time, Reggie. There he is right there. He got right by Jabril Wilson, slipped by him, takes it into the end zone with a 15-yard catch and run touchdown. His second touchdown today. And it doesn't have to be that complicated. That's the great thing about Drew Breeze. He understands a simple check down to Reggie Bush against a linebacker. One on one, he'll make. He usually makes somebody miss. He usually makes the first person miss. Watch it, just right here in front of your screen. Watch the miss. Right there, does a great job kicking out of that, using that left stiff arm. And that's the thing they're so good at, getting him the ball in space and let him go to work. Now off with the extra point, just under six to play here in the third. The interception by Jason David sets up the pass, a catch and run to Reggie Bush. Two plays, 17 yards, and just like that, the Saints have blown this one open in the Superdome. Hell on CBS is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Get loads of melty cheese with a stuffed crust pizza, only from Pizza Hut. And by FedEx, your ultimate NFL air and ground player. 15-yard catch-and-run touchdown by Reggie Bush. He also had a three-yard touchdown run back in the first half. And that might have been the dagger for the Saints. Oakland has not shown much on offense. Only 140 total yards today. The interception by Jason David off of quarterback Jamarcus Russell sets that up. And then swing kickoff by Mel Hoff. And this will be taken by Johnny Lee Higgins at about the three-yard line for the Oakland Raiders. He blocked by Stewart. And he is brought down on the play by Pierre Thomas. 18-yard return. 5.55 in the third. And Watt now riding in front. 24-3 New Orleans lead. A couple touchdown passes today by Drew Brees. His team up 24-3. Here come the Raiders. 21-yard line, first and 10. They got McFadden in the backfield. Adele along with Bobby McCray begin this defensive series on the defensive line for the New Orleans Saints. Russell threw an interception the last pass. McFadden, hit by Mike McKenzie. We have not talked about him a bunch today, and McFadden takes it for eight. He's up to the 28-yard line. And tomorrow on CBS, one brother's employee is another brother's opportunity on TV's number one comedy, Two and a Half Men. And this is a new episode tomorrow at 9, 8 Central on CBS. Second down and two. After getting off to a pretty good start, Jamarcus Russell has really struggled. He's missed eight of his last ten throws. He's to find a way to get himself back in rhythm. Zach Miller, the tight end in motion, pitch out to McFadden. Lead blocked by Harris, and McFadden.
Fagan has what appears to be a first down as he was hit by Shannon. You know, on a gain of five, backpedaling his way was McFadden to the 34 yard line. And one of the things, as you're, when you're a quarterback and you're struggling a little bit, and you're trying to find your way, I'm going to tell you, a productive running game can really take some of that pressure off you. And it's good to see McFadden back in there getting some carries. Didn't play a lot in the first half, just three carries in the first half, but. Getting him the ball, letting him get going, could really take some of that pressure off of Jamarcus Russell. Adele is out. Under Clancy is in on that defensive line for New Orleans, first and ten. Russell got away from hey. McCray, throws outside where Gay decks the fullback who caught it, Justin Griffith, the ex Atlanta Falcon. It's a gain of eight. We're up to the 42 yard line. He's done a good job. You see him stepping up there in the pocket. I think his awareness in the pocket has been better the last couple of weeks. The ball security, he's taking care of it. He's not putting it on the ground. And I think he's understanding what they're trying to accomplish in terms of their protections as well as what the defenses are trying to do to him. They could go deep here. They got Lillian and Higgins in his receiver. Second down and two. Instead, they go to McFadden. What a hit on the play by Jonathan Vilma. Oh, what a terrific acquisition he has been. No gain. They stay at the 42-yard line. We talked to him the other day, the leading tackler for the Saints. You don't see Darren McFadden get pushed back like that very often. But what happens is he doesn't really feel or see Jonathan Vilma at all. Vilma was tied up with Robert Gallery, the left guard. He comes off the last second. And Darren McFadden never anticipates that hit from Jonathan Vilma. Third and a long two. David is coming for Fujita as the nickelback. Fargus in the backfield. Fargus got a block from Gallery. Hands the first down as he slips by the defender, tackled by Shanley. It's a gain of four to the 46. I want to thank the MetLife Blimp for, for providing these aerial shots today of all the drama below. But for the MetLife Blimps, Snoopy one, two, and three when they pass through a town near you. We've enjoyed our weekend in New Orleans immensely. First and 10, 46 yard line. Higgins will be on top of your screen, and Curry had a good start to the game at the bottom. McFadden back in as the running back. Back to four in the secondary. Vegeta back in. Play action. Harris with the block. Russell, Bobber, and dropped. McFadden couldn't hold on to it, and Shanley was covering on the play. That is the fourth. Drop pass by a Raider receiver today. When you look where a lot of these throws are going from the Raiders, a lot of them are in the middle of the field. And when we talked with the Saints, they said we have to defend the middle of the field. They feel like Jamarcus Russell throws vertical seams and inside breaking routes much better than he does the outside cuts. So he seems to be favoring working the middle of the field more than his outside lanes. Will Smith has come in from a crazy the starting defensive line out there for the Orleans second down and ten. McFadden in the backfield. Gay makes the tackle on Lee, who was down, and now they say it's an incomplete pass at the 50 yard line. And Randall Gay was there. Again, he was the nickel back. And then when Tracy Porter, the rookie out of Indiana, got injured, dislocating his wrists, they stick Gay at the right corner position. But not a lot of production from those Raider receivers today. defensive backs the three linebackers will stay in three on the defensive line third down and ten Johnny Lee Higgins along with Walker at the bottom of his screen Michael Bush is at the side of Jamarcus Russell we haven't talked about Michael Bush today at all he hasn't been in until now the timeout taken by Jamarcus Russell third and ten coming up for the interim head coach, Tom Cable. Well, Tuesday on CBS, watch closely and you'll see why The Mentalist is TV's number one new show. Critics call Simon Baker terrific and the show full of juicy twists. The Mentalist's new episode, Tuesday at 9, 8 central on CBS. So Greg Knapp is over there and all the coaches told us yesterday for the Raiders that they really don't expect a huge sea change in the way things are going to be called at least initially in the wake of Lane Kiffin's fire. And it's very difficult to do that particularly at this point in the season and hard to shift gears and start going a different direction in terms of the philosophy and the concepts. They really have to zero in and focus in on things that Jamarcus Russell understands and feels comfortable with. Lillian atop your screen, Walker at the bottom, Higgins in the slot, third down and ten. David is the nickel back, and Michael Bush is in the backfield with Russell. Good block by Gallery. 
Russell got away from Smith. He's chased by Fujita. And he throws on the fly another drop. The fifth by the Raiders today. And Bush, the flag has been thrown. Bush is the one to drop it. Phillies decline. Fourth down. Fourth down, and the Raiders will punt the ball. I'll tell you what. The strength of this unit, this defensive line for the Saints. You watch the push in the pocket. This is a good job by Jamarcus Russell keeping this play alive and using his legs like we talked about in the first half. And that's a ball right there that Michael Bush has to catch. Luckily, will be punting to Reggie Bush, who's back at the New Orleans 11. He had two punt returns for touchdowns last week against the Minnesota Vikings. And hang time. You just watch this hang time by Shane Leckler. Last time, 3.6 and a 40-yard punt by Shane. Looking for redemption wow. here. This one almost scrapes the roof. Into the end zone, hang time of 5-3. One time, Ray Guy for the Raiders kicked one so high in this building that it hit what is now gone, the gondola, which was a uh, scoreboard that hung right over the 50-yard line. Now it is gone, but Guy hit that, and Leckler is in that same Ray Guy mold. Don't set your fantasy league lineup without watching fantasy football today. Live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, only on CBSSports.com. Jason Horowitz is there with the Fantasy Football Today studio. And all the CBS crews, about two hours before kickoff, file reports from each press box. So you get a terrific view and inside information before anybody else does on CBSSports.com. From the 20-yard line, first and 10 for Drew Brees. Is that a... Spectacular day. McAllister is in the backfield as the running back. Deuce. Tripped up by Janelle Sands and falls ahead. Does McAllister for about four yards up to the 24 yard line. Well, they started the second half the right way. You get a touchdown to get to get things going, to get this crowd back in it. And that's really what they needed to do. Finish drives. They didn't do that in the first half. You see Steckler with, with the catch on the screen pass. And then the interception by Jason David. And finally, Reggie Bush making a guy miss and finishing. Second down and six. They had McAllister in the backfield by himself, and he rumbles ahead, hit by Huff, and knocked down by the rookie, Trevor Scott. Sixth round pick out of Buffalo. It's a gain of four. And they spot him at the 28 yard line. So I just can't say enough about the job that Drew Brees has done today. 23 of 26. But the great thing, Kevin, he's shown it to nine different receivers. I mean, he spread the ball around. He gets everybody involved in the game early. You know, I see the parallel. I don't know if you do. Of you and Brees and Gruden and Sean Payton at different places trying to change the culture. Well, you know what? They have a relationship. It's special. It's unique. They believe in each other. There's great trust there. And I'll tell you what. You can't argue with the results on the field. Bush is in third and two. Nickel secondary is what Brees will throw into. And he's got Devery Henderson, the track star from LSU. He beats Michael Huff. And he's all the way to the 21-yard line. That's a 51-yard completion to Devery Henderson. Second round pick five years ago from LSU. He's coming off a 100-yard receiving game Monday against Minnesota. He's just going to get up on the safety. This is a mismatch. You see Michael Huff trying to keep up with Henderson, but you just know the priority coming to this game for the Raiders to eliminate the big play, the explosive plays in the passing game, and that's something Debrie Henderson does as well as anybody, averaging 31.7 yards a catch coming into today's game. Thank you, regular alignment defensively. First and 10, Reggie Bush, Carney a block. And he was slowed down by Richardson, pops back up, and then Richardson pops back up and throws him for a one-yard loss. Richardson was a fifth-round draft choice last season out of Ohio State and had a bunch of starts in that game. He's down at the 22-yard line, and that should take us to the end of the third quarter. With Drew Brees having thrown two touchdown passes today, Reggie Bush has two touchdowns, 24-3 the Saints. Here we begin the fourth quarter. Sean Payton's team up 24 to 3. And I really enjoyed being around him on Friday. I mean, his energy, his passion, he's got a certain swagger about him. It's very contagious in that facility. Four linebackers, three down linemen for the Raiders. First play of the fourth quarter. Second down 11 from the 22. In the backfield is Reggie Bush. Good block by Evans. And all 
quarterback did was just throw it down because the pocket was collapsing. His options were gone, and Isley throws it away. But yeah, you enjoyed our Friday conversation with Peyton and, and Drew Brees. Well, I just love talking football with him, and you know he reminds me a lot of John Gruden. I mean, they spent time together on that Philadelphia coaching staff. He worked with the quarterbacks. You look at his playlist there. I mean, he believes in this quarterback, Drew Brees. You can see it. He was he was ecstatic when he talked about him on Friday. Look, look this is a, this is how much he trusts him. You look at this empty backfield. No, no people, nobody in the backfield. They love this set. Six in the secondary. That's what Brees will go into. He's on the fly. He's got to get to the 11. He was taken down from behind on the play by Trevor Scott, the rookie. It's a seven-yard game. So he's down to the 16. That dime package was out there. They only had a three defensive alignment rush at Breeze. And so for one of the few times today, he comes up empty and they'll try for a field goal. And this will be a 33 yard try by Melhoff. This is good work for Melhoff. Oh, he's had a rugged day. He's missed a field goal. He had a. But he needs reps. He's a young, he's a rookie. He needs the reps. Now, Grammatica was a right footed kicker. This kid is a left footed kicker, so the spin and the put down by Weatherford has got to be good, and it is, as is the kick. 14 10 to play in the fourth quarter. 27 to 3. It's New Orleans running away from the Raiders on Sunday. Branch, he had the fastest time at the combine among defensive backs, but that time, Joe Juan Dunbar, who is an undrafted rookie, makes the stop. It's a return of 11 yards on the play. Dunbar is from Boston College. Well, he had a great block, by the way, on one of Reggie Bush's punt returns against the Vikings on Monday. And you see the quarterback comparison there, and I hope Jamarcus Russell, in between series, is watching the guy on the other uh, on the other side, Drew Brees. I mean, he is a perfect guy to pattern yourself after. But he is the real deal. Did you used to do that as a young quarterback? Always. I watched all these guys, Favre and Manning and Brady. I want to find out what they were doing and why they were so successful. First and ten, McFadden in the backfield. Play action by Russell, and he's got time. That's caught by Zach Miller, the leading receiver, brought down by Roman Harper. Catch and run of 23 yards. He's up to the 38-yard line. This is a nice job by Zach Miller. Good, patient route runner. Watch this. He's going to start in here, and he's going to work back out at the top. And he does a nice job setting the safety, setting the angle high, Giving Jamarcus Russell a chance to use the boundary. Good route by Zach Miller. McCray on this defensive line has taken the place of Charles Grant, left defensive end for New Orleans. First and 10, 38 yard line. McFadden remains. Good block by Grove and Carlisle. That's off the fingertips and incomplete of Curry, who is running that quick slant. Curry has caught passes today back in the first quarter at 10, 13, and 8 yards. Well, I think there's a fine line for the Raiders between. Bringing your young quarterback along in the in the evolution of this passing game and getting away from what you do very well. Actually, the best thing you do, and that's running the football with your two backs, Fargus and McFadden. Fargus just 10 carries, McFadden just seven. That's not enough touches for these two good backs. Second down and ten. This is McFadden out of Arkansas. And into the teeth of that defense. He was hit by Brian Young. It's a gain of two. He's up to the 40 yard line. Again, Brian Young taking the place of the injured Cedric Ellis, the number one pick out of USC, the Pac 10 defensive lineman of the year. This young had a great game on Monday against the Vikings. Yeah, he's really he did a nice job filling in for Cedric Ellis. And the thing I like about Brian Young is he doesn't take plays off, he plays with a lot of energy. He shows up not only in the passing game, but the running game as well. Michael Bush is in the backfield with Russell. Slot receiver is Johnny Lee Higgins. David has become the nickel back out for Jeta. Third down and eight. Lee was at the top of your screen. Uh oh, here they come. McCree knocks it away. It's a fumble. Looks like the Raiders. I don't know. I thought the Raiders may have gotten it, but it could be a turnover, and it is. It's claimed by New Orleans. The second turnover for the New Orleans Saints. First sack today on Jamarcus Russell. Clancy got it, but it was Bobby McCray, the former starter with Jacksonville, number 93, that came through and threw down Russell. And you just watch, he just working on Cornell Green. He just beats him up top and he gets in on Jamarcus Russell. And that's why they have Bobby McCray, the free agent pickup from the from Jacksonville. I mean, he is an explosive pass rusher, and that's something Jamarcus Russell has to do a better job of taking care of the football in the pocket. 
32 yard line first and 10 Henderson and Moore will be atop your screen. Callister is in the backfield first and 10. Deuce turning a block. Good win a block. And he is smothered at about the 31 yard line and hit there by Jay Richardson on a gain of a yard. Wednesday, join James Brown, Phil Sims, Warren Sapp, and Chris Collinsworth for the best analysis, highlights, insights, news, and more on Inside the NFL. Callister will come out, Bush will come in. Two turnovers, uh, interception of Russell, and a fumble right there by Russell. Russell has fumbled now for the fourth time this season. Ball secured in the pocket. It's something you work on early in the training camp and the offseason program. Second down and nine. Again, Bush back there with Carter. Breeze. Caught, and what a pass. Moore at the four. A 27-yard completion. Hall was there to put his hand on him. I mean, Breeze threads the needle. And what did Drew Breeze tell us in the meeting on Friday? He said that D'Angelo Hall doesn't want to get beat and he concedes a lot of throws underneath. No huddle. This is the lightning quick and there goes a flag thrown. That was uh, Bush who takes it up the middle and brought down by Morrison. Among others that's a penalty. For, he's pointed both ways now. Who is it Terry? It's against the Raiders. Defense, 12 men on the field. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Boy has Moore had a great day for New Orleans and a frustrated Rob Ryan the defensive coordinator for the Raiders more catching that for 27 yards earlier today catches of 12 20 17 and 18 yards to Lance Moore who's the all time receiving leader at the University of Toledo on the practice squad in 05 and 06 emerged last year with 32 receptions for Breeze in his offense and here he is starting for Colston and really thriving and taking advantage of the opportunity that's what you like to see from a young player. But if you watch Drew Brees in this offense, they don't even give you a chance to catch your breath. I mean, the tempo at which they get in and out of the huddle, at which they're calling plays, I mean, they're really dominating the line of scrimmage, and they're really taking it to this Raiders defense. Sam Williams, one of four linebackers, first and goal. And the two, Brees, easy touchdown completion caught by Campbell. That's a two-yard touchdown pass. Campbell gets it, and that is his 11th. Touchdown reception in his career. And I gotta tell you, as a quarterback, you just love this. I mean, you have the ball first and goal, and instead of running it three times, you give your quarterback a chance to get an easy one here. And that's the mindset of Sean Payton. A little different mindset than a lot of coaches. He is aggressive and he wants to attack regardless of where he's at on the field. So the Saints cash in on the fumble by Jamarcus Russell. The big sack by Bobby McCray, who makes this great field position possible. The extra point by Melhaff. There was also a very nice pass completion to Lance Moore. Breeze has thrown three touchdown passes today. Here he finds his tight end. By the Home Depot, the official home improvement sponsor of the NFL. Chevy an American revolution and by Bud Light the difference is drinkability Russell's fumble a 27 yard pass to Moore eventually a two yard touchdown pass to Campbell Breeze three touchdown passes today and 34 to three New Orleans Mel off knocks this one into the end zone and there is no win aided kick there. Higgins drops to an eight. 11 04 to play. Campbell had that touchdown reception moments ago, the tight end. An advanced two mode. Radles will start after their uh, return man. Higgins left it in the end zone on the touchback by Melhoff at the 20 yard line. First down and 10. Down 34 to 3. Michael Bush at the side of Russell. Nickel secondary. David Mallett played back there the entire game. Michael Bush out of Louisville. Fourth round pick. Didn't play last year. The tackle was made on that defensive line by Idell. It's a gain of three with a 23. You go back and look at the touchdown. Keep an eye right there on Michael Huff. 
You can't have your eyes on the back in the backfield and not feel Mark Campbell slip right out there. That's his responsibility. He gets back to techniques and fundamental, which are really hurting this Raiders defense. Second down and seven. Now headed by the Raiders, and there was movement, I think, on that offense. From the San Francisco starter, Wayne Harris. It is the call, and it is on the Raiders. March it back to the 18 yard line. Like Tom Cable. He said growing up in the state of Washington, his goal was some day to work for the Raider organization. Second down and 12. Harris with a good block, and that goes outside. With David covering Ashley Lilly, a number one pick by Denver a couple years ago. He's out of bounds after a gain of 11 at about the 29. Just watch Jake Grove. He's your center here. Just watch his head. Watch all the movement. And when I broke down this, this the New Orleans defensive line, one of the things I saw, particularly in the shotgun, is they were really jumping the snap count. They were anticipating. And what they do is they watch the center's head. Once he lifts it up and sets it, they just tee off and go. Jake Grove did a nice job in this game, moving his head back and forth with his different gyrations, making it very difficult for them to get off on the ball. Nickel secondary on this handoff to Bush on third and one. He picks up that yard. Looks like if they spun it the way we think, he'll have a first down. Kendrick Clancy at the bottom of that pile, making the stop. And again, the no huddle continues for the Raiders. Well, it's reps. It's reps. And that's where they have to look at this. He's got a young quarterback. He's learning. He's growing. Every time out, it's a learning experience for Jamarcus Russell. They get the first down. Bush remains in the backfield. Is he audible? No, no this is a system that's not really set up for that. First and ten. Here comes Grant. Boy, he just doesn't want to run, does he? Here comes Smith. Almost picked off. Almost picked off by Bullets. And he's reluctant to run at times, and that's the thing he's got to get in. He's got to get into his head. And you watch him, he's going to get out here. It's a nice job stepping up. Watch him get out here on the edge. And there's plenty of room to run. I mean, there's plenty of room. Everyone's in man to man coverage, and you just don't want to make these throws back across the field into triple coverage. And he was almost over the line of scrimmage. Now you have to know where you are in the field, and you have to understand the situation. Chaz Schillens, a rookie, top your screen out of San Diego State, second and 10. Nickel secondary, David is the nickel. Dump it off. Stewart, the ex bingo hit by Vilma. And Tony Stewart with the catch and run out to the 37 yard line, picks up seven yards. You know, we haven't really talked much about, about Lane Kiffin, that whole situation. It was unfortunate, but I really believe that he'll land on his feet somewhere. I mean, he's just too good at what he does, whether it be back here in the National Football League or maybe even a head coaching opportunity in college. Bush in the backfield, third down and three from the 37. Here comes McCray. There goes the pass out quickly caught by Schillens. Sixth round draft choice and a rookie. He's up to the 46 yard line brought down on the play by Gay. Nine yard gain. Schillens with the third catch of his career. You see the owner there Al Davis. He can't be happy with what he's seen with this football team. And is that his son next to him. That is. That is his son. First and 10. 46. Blocked by Stewart to tight end. Russell throwing downfield incomplete. Looking for Curry covered by Day and David and Bullets. And I really believe you, know, you talked about all the, the term, turmoil, the turnover they had at the head coaching position. You need consistency. And that's what they haven't had. Five coaches in six years. And it's very hard. You put a guy like this, Tom Cable, in a very difficult situation. I mean, even though they're coming off, they had the bye week, the extra time, that's a lot to ask, not only for him, but the rest of that staff. You got Greg Knapp, who's had to shift gears now and call plays, put game plans together. Very difficult to ask of a coaching staff. Second and 10, Bush stays in the game, blocked by Carlisle. That's caught by Zach Miller. Vilma gets him from behind. The catcher under the 40 picks up 14 yards. Well, I think keep it moving. Well, I think Lane Kiffin, when you go back and look at what he did here as the head coach of the Raiders, I think he clearly understood the strengths as well as the limitations of this offense. And I think he called the game accordingly. I mean, the strength, their ability to run the ball with two very good backs and a much improved offensive line. Their limitations, though, they have inexperience at quarterback, no real big 
threat the wide receiver position and offensive tackles that need help sometimes. New Orleans timeout. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by Cadillac. Introducing the 2009 Cadillac Escalade Hybrid. Gorgeous day here in New Orleans, and you take a look flying high above Lake Pontchartrain, the MetLife blimp providing these aerials for CBS. Back again, first and ten. Timeout taken by New Orleans, 7.34 to play in the game. Bush in the backfield, five in the secondary, Russell rolling out, Carlisle with the block. Going deep, looking for Lurie, and it's incomplete. Coverage on the play by Bullocks. Ashley Lurie. Well, it's been a tough day for Jamarcus Russell. He got off to a good start early, but then after that, the accuracy, missing these, some of these receivers when he had them open, not feeling Jason David in the flat, and a problem that he's had all season, ball security in the pocket. Just more awareness of what's going on around him. And I think that comes with time. Understanding the system, understanding protections, and understanding where you're short at times when it comes to pressures. Young has become another defensive back with David. Second down and 10. Starting defensive line out there for New Orleans. That's way over the head of Kirk. And a double coverage on the play, including Bullocks and Randall Gay. Well, they're going to continue to evolve and grow this passing game. They're going to need more production from the wide receiver position. I mean, it has to be a concern. Their top three receivers, I'm talking about Ronald Curry, Ashley Lee, and Javon Walker, had a combined 12 catches coming into today's game. And there's not a lot of production there. And I think one of the problems is there's not a lot of speed. There's not a lot of big play potential at that position. And that's a problem right now for this Raiders offense. McKenzie is out. Young is in as the quarterback. Third and 10, 11 play of the drive, pushing the backfield. Walker at the bottom of your screen. They dump it off, Michael Bush. Blocked by Carlisle. Nice play by Young. Flag is down. Well, I'll take it, they just picked it up. And also Harper in there, there's Young. Third round pick out of Kent State a couple years ago, and he's had a good special teams tackle today. But McKenzie is out. I am guessing the rest of that, that, that knee of his, which is not very good. And this is the luxury when you're the Saints, when you have a lead like this, 34-3 in the fourth quarter, you can pull some of your starters, rest them. And the other thing is you get some of your young players some valuable playing time, some valuable experience in a game like this. Schillings and Higgins at the bottom of your screen, fourth and six. They need the 30-yard line, five in the secondary for the New Orleans Saints. The block by Grove. Oh, he's got time. Oh, and he's got Shillings, but he overshot him in the end zone. On downs, the Raiders will give it over. That's typified their day. Boy, I tell you what, you don't get many opportunities to have him this wide open. And when you get him, boy, you got to hit him. I mean, you just see right here, Shillings, he's working right there on, on David. And boy, he falls for the double move. He looks back inside. And that's one Javon or Jamarcus Russell is going to want to have back. I mean, you don't get many opportunities like that in this league. I mean, guys are never that wide open. You have to hit them when you got them. 12 play drive. They give it up on downs. 37 yard line. Breeze. They take it up. Starters out there. McAllister in the backfield. Hiram Eugene is coming now in the four defensive back set. McAllister. Cool. Grind it out, brought down by Howard and a bunch of others, including Tommy Kelly, and he moves the pile for eight yards. And he's up to the 45-yard line. Good looking run by McAllister, who today has 59 yards on the ground. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year at Purdue. All kinds of Big Ten conference records. Second round pick by San Diego. But then they went for Phillip Rivers, hurt his shoulder, and that kind of turned the Chargers off. Didn't want the big paycheck. But Sean Payton found a kindred spirit in his own making. And he brings him here. Breeze had to side between Miami and New Orleans, and he picked the Saints second down and two. First down run. Eugene makes the stop on McAllister. That's a gain of six, and they'll spot him at the 49. I'll tell you what, they hit a home run, maybe a grand slam when they signed this guy right here. I mean, he is tough. He's a great competitor. And you talked, Kevin, about 2005, the last game of the regular season. He blows out his throwing shoulder, 
And I'll tell you what, they took a they took a chance on this guy. But what did he tell us? He had the surgery down in Birmingham, and he stayed there for four months, four months, and completed that rehabilitation. And that's what you have to do. That speaks volumes about this guy's commitment to getting better and to being the best possible player he can be. Two tight ends push in the backfield first and ten. Edgy Bush. Run down by Kirk Morrison around the angles after a gain of a yard to the 49. He also said Dante Culpepper was down there. He had knee surgery from Dr. Andrews, but he stayed just a handful of days and left and rehabbed in Florida. And Nick Saban, the coach that time of the Dolphins, had a choice. Do I go for Breeze or do I go for Dante Culpepper? And they chose Culpepper. And Breeze came here, and boy, look how fortune has worked for Drew. And, and they chose wrong, honestly. And the, and the decision that he he's made some bad decisions, Dante Culpepper, and that was one of them. Not rehabbing there, not rehabbing with the Vikings, the team that he was with at the time. That was a mistake, and it came back to haunt him. Aaron Stecker in the game, second down, long nine from the 49. Stecker, the one-time Tampa Bay Buccaneer player, takes it into the grass, but Jay Richardson gained a three to the 45. They just like to run this ball out. Well, this guy right here is a guy that I know. His name is Aaron Cromer. He was the offensive line coach with me in Oakland when we went to the Super Bowl. He was in Tampa Bay last year as an offensive line coach. He's now coaching the running backs. And when we talked with Reggie Bush, he said, this guy has really helped me become a complete player. And what he did was he helped Reggie understand line play and see it from their eyes. The run blocking schemes as well as the protections and what he made him do in the offseason was go up at the board and draw it all up draw up the protections draw up the blocking schemes so that he understood and he could anticipate better the cuts round is the nickel they sent Bush out as a receiver and down he goes Tommy Kelly Saxon for the first time for the Raiders on Drew Brees today Brees by the way has been sacked coming into today only five times one of the lowest marks in the NFL so that's the sixth sack given up by this offensive line. And now it will be fourth down. And they do a nice job. That's one of the things they pride themselves on here is protecting the passer. Last year, they gave up 16 sacks. That was the least amount in the National Football League. And when you have a quarterback that's pr as productive as Drew Brees, you have to keep him healthy. And, and, and what about the ways Brees does keep himself healthy? All the things he does physically. We watched him. We, we waited 30 minutes after practice because he was working with the trainers. He was doing extra stretching, some core work. We watched him before the game. Very disciplined in his approach. Next Sunday on CBS, LT, Big Ben, Chad Johnson, Ray Lewis, Peyton Manning, and Brett Favre among the big shots you'll see highlighting our doubleheader action next week. All begins with JB and the crew at the NFL Today Studios in New York at noon Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central on CBS. Boy, New Orleans getting back on its feet, and the dome has never looked better. The downtown area thriving. The quarter was terrific, and there's such a vibrancy about this city. It's just a real pleasure to come down here to New Orleans and do a game. And it's starting to all come together for them, and they look sharp in every category. I mean, they look good offensively, running the ball, throwing it. They played well on defense, and they've been pretty solid in the kicking game. Fourth down, Weatherford will punt. First time in five second half possessions they haven't scored. This will go into the end zone. In the second half, an eight-yard touchdown pass to Stecker. A 15-yard catch-and-run touchdown pass to Bush. A 33-yard field goal and a two-yard touchdown pass to the tight end Campbell moments ago. That was a 46-yard punt into the end zone. That's the first time in this second half that they have not scored the ball. You, you know, see a lot some of, of our numbers from today. Yeah, you know, you know, a lot of the, the focus and attention, unfortunately, in this organization, I'm talking about the Raiders, has been on the coaching staff but at some time at some point the players on the field are going to have to take it upon themselves to, to say you know what I've had enough we we collectively as a group have to have to get it done and we have to assume more of a, an active role more of a leadership role in helping to turn this thing around first and ten with five in the secondary and Michael Bush will take it up to the gate of five to the 25 yard line Vilma was there making the stop this kid was drafted out of Louisville Hurt his leg his senior year, did not play after getting drafted in the fourth round by the Raiders, sat out all last year. So this, in essence, is his rookie season for Oakland. Clock continues to tick. Raiders have two timeouts, second down and five. Higgins in the slot. And again, McKenzie still staying out, and Young taking his place at the corner for the Saints. Schillens can't get it, and there is the aforementioned Young. Right in front of Chaz Schillens. Third down and five. 
Next week, New Orleans will play Carolina. Carolina is getting crushed in Tampa today. A little bit of a shocker there, but I'll tell you what, they have a tough road to hold the next four weeks. They're at Carolina. They have to go on the road over to London, play San Diego. They have the bye again on the road again in Atlanta and Kansas City. So they won't be back here in New Orleans until November 24th against the Packers. Bush and Stewart in the backfield with Russell. Third down and five from the 25. Nickel secondary four. Here comes McCray with his second shot today. On his first, he forced a fumble. That time he devours Russell back at the 15, a loss of 10. Bobby McCray, what a terrific free agent acquisition this past offseason. So they're going to have to punt. We're at the two minute warning. Bobby McCray doing it again. Five years out of Florida with a terrific play. Couple times. And the Subway Post Game Show will come your way when this game concludes here in New Orleans. From CBS Studios in New York. New quarterback is Mark Brunel for the New Orleans Saints. He is a 16-year veteran from a Rose Bowl MVP. He has spent the last couple years with the Redskins. And he was a starter from 04 to 06 in Washington. First and ten. And Pierre Thomas. Brought down by Kalimba Edwards in a gain of four up near the 24 yard line. Edwards starting today for Derek Burgess, who they missed on that rush edge. Yeah, they missed some of that. That's their best pass rusher. And they missed his presence out there. He has the ability to get upfield and, and put pressure on the quarterback. And that was one of the problems today. Drew Brees had too much time back there in the pocket. 26 of 30, 320 yards, three touchdowns, an efficient day. But really, he was sitting back there. He was comfortable. He was taking extra hitches. And that really was a problem. They couldn't get to him at all during this game. Brees goes with the sixth consecutive game without an interception against the Raiders. So it was a second and six. No gain on the play. Morrison again at the bottom of that pile on Pierre Thomas, who led Illinois in rushing three consecutive seasons. Good day for, good day, great day for wow. Drew Brees. You're not going to see a quarterback rating a heck of a lot better than that. No picks, three touchdown passes. He had nine different receivers. He was, well, he was Rich Gannon like today. Well, I don't know about that. Well, but I'll tell you, no, what, you can just you. see it in his eyes. I mean, he loves playing here. He's excited again about about this this team and I think his greatest strength is as Sean Payton said his ability to process information to get us in the right situation every time. So third and five that's a first down run by Pierre Thomas. Tom Cable made his coaching debut for the Raiders today and coming off a heartbreaking loss Monday night to Minnesota. Drew Brees and Sean Payton come in with a good win against the Raiders. Now the Saints have won two of the last three. The Raiders have lost three consecutive games. Great day for Drew Brees with three touchdown passes. Rich Gannon, Kevin Harlan saying so long. Coming up, the Subway post game show. For more, let's go to JB, who is our man in our studios in New York. All right, Kevin, so the Saints improved to three and three with that spanking of the Oakland Raiders there. We're now going to take you out to the ball game in Houston. Miami and Houston 28 23 Miami on top by five 145 left in regulation. Let's join our announcers at that contest Ian Eagle and Solomon Wilcox. Miami 28 Houston 23 with a minute 45 to go on the fourth Chad Pennington navigating a five play 73 yard drive. That was after a drive. that Miami had going and had some momentum where Pennington was picked off. Anthony Fasano couldn't haul it in. It got knocked up in the air. Eugene Wilson with the interception for Houston, but on the return, he fumbled it. Miami got the ball back and then came down the field for the go-ahead touchdown. And once again, the Houston Texans in the fourth quarter have a chance to win a football game where they have the lead and a turnover leads to a change of possession and allow the other team to come back and regain the lead in the fourth quarter. So now they've got a way they got to find a way to finish it on the offensive side of the ball. Last week, an excruciating loss to Indianapolis, leading 27 to 10 with just over four minutes to play. And the Colts came from behind to knock off the Texans 31 to 27. Andre Davis on the return for Houston. 
Coming up, Subway Post Game Show. JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower with the latest NFL scores and highlights all coming up on the Subway Post Game Show. So the Texans take over. First down at their own 24 yard line, trailing 28 to 23 with a minute 40 left. What do you do on first down here? I think you got to get the ball in the hands of Andre Johnson. Houston has two timeouts to work with. Schaub will operate out of the shotgun, trailing by five. Schaub steps up and thrown down. Guess who? Joey Porter. And Porter has been a nemesis for Matt Schaub all day long. And coming right off the top and able to put the pressure on Schaub coming in from the blind side. And it'll go down as a loss of seven on the play. Schaub steps up, slings it, and a diving attempt made by Andre Davis. It's a clean catch out across the 35-yard line. Covers 20 yards and a first down for Houston. Well, they need to pick up plays in chunks. They're going to use timeout here. And Houston still has one timeout to work with. 103 left on the clock. Job has gone over 300 yards on the day. 19 of 33, 318 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. Well, you got to protect first, and more importantly, you got to give help to your rookie left tackle, Dwayne Brown, as he's trying his best and doing everything to fight and protect and keep Joey Porter from getting to the quarterback. The Texans 0-4 on the season. They came in one of four winless teams in the NFL: St. Louis, Cincinnati. And Detroit, the other three. They have never lost to the Dolphins, though, 3-0, including a come-from-behind win last year, 22-19 on a 57-yard Chris Brown field goal. Shotgun, Schaub, hit as he throws, ball is loose. Joey Porter jumps on top of it. Schaub claiming that his hand was moving forward along with his arm. Arm was coming forward, and good thing. He was on top of the quarterback in no time flat. They've got to give Dwayne Brown some help. Here he is coming right there. Now watch, they try to chip him with Slayton, but it's still not enough to slow up Porter. Arm was coming forward, but even with help that time provided for Dwayne Brown, still not enough to keep Porter from reaching the quarterback. So second and 10, and Houston fortunate. Incomplete pass for Schaub. 102 left here in the fourth. Shotgun for Schaub. Protection holds up. Schaub throws into some traffic. It's incomplete. Andre Davis in a matchup with Michael Lehan, and it brings up third and ten. At that time, they slid the line towards Porter. They had three guys blocking on him. Try to do anything they can to provide some time for Shaw to throw that ball. That time the defense on the back end held up for Miami. Texans lost in overtime two weeks ago to Jacksonville. Lost to Indianapolis. 31 to 27 last week. An unlikely finish there where Houston was in complete control. Now trying to come back against Miami here in the fourth. Shaw. That ball sputtered coming off his hands. Andre Goodman steps in front. And Goodman comes up with the pick. Third interception of the day. And it's over. Schaub is claiming it should be incomplete. They can review it upstairs under two minutes. The question's going to be whether or not the ball hit the ground. Uh, he's coming back to the ball. Yeah, it hit ball, the ground. Ball did hit the ground. And Schaub was hit. The ruling on the field is that the pass was intercepted. Well, that'll be overturned. We are the ruling on the field. So Houston will live to see one more play. And you wonder why that ball was so poorly thrown. It was underthrown because Schaub was hit as he was stepping up to throw the football. Ed Hockley will take a look. It is under review with 49 seconds left. This is not the situation Gary Kubiak wanted to be in, to say the least. Remember, he talked to us that we need to stay out of obvious passing situations. Well, here on this entire possession, it has been an obvious passing situation, and they have not been able to protect the quarterback. You see the hit on Shaw by Channing Crowder. That's what 
caused that ball to flutter in the air and causing the ball to be underthrown, giving Goodman a chance to make a play on the ball. I think it's clear the ball hit the ground. Yeah, it was an obvious trap by Andre Goodman. So Hockey Lee will take a look. Goodman's hands were not scooped underneath the ball. And you saw contact between the football and the natural grass. Houston offense has remained on the field anticipating that they're going to get another crack at it here on fourth down. One more look. And that was a bounce to Goodman. Ed Hockey Lee will make the announcement. He'll be a popular man, at least for a moment, here in Houston. The ball skipped off the ground, therefore it was incomplete. It's fourth down at the 36-yard line. It is fourth and ten for Gary Kubiak and the Houston Texans with 49 seconds to play, 28 to 23, Dolphins leading the Texans. And during the review, Gary Kubiak had ample time to figure out what it is that he wants to try to do on this fourth and ten play. Here's your ball game, fourth and ten. Houston trailing Miami. 52 seconds remain. Job on a roll. Stops. Throws and complete Andre Johnson, a remarkable grab. Jeremiah Bell played it perfectly, except Johnson came up with a football. What a catch by Andre Johnson. They'll spike it with 29 seconds remaining on the clock. That is all world by Johnson. Oh, it's a rollout one play, then they go back the other way. Bell's in excellent position to make a play on the ball, but Johnson just goes up and corrals the ball and fights Bell and comes up with it. Big time catch for Andre Johnson. Look at that. With his arm draped all over the ball, Johnson did a really good job of corralling the arm of Jeremiah Bell and the ball along with it. Nine catches, 170 yards, and a touchdown for Johnson. Second and ten after the spike at the 41-yard line of Miami. Houston trying to rally here in the fourth. Schaub floats it up. Called in. Kevin Walter stays on his feet, and he's out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Two big-time throws for Matt Schott, leading the receiver. Going clear outside the numbers. This is a big-time throw. Steps up into it as he gets hit. And Walter stays alive and able to make the catch and get out of bounds to stop the clock. 23 seconds left. First down for the Texans. Now they're going to have the chance to take a shot at the end zone. 28-23 Miami. Gary Kubiak looking for his first win here in 2008. Slayton. Chips out of the backfield. Shaw to throw it. Shaw. Short of the goal line, Andre Johnson. They're going to have to use their timeout. 16 seconds left. No to, to 23. 16 seconds remaining. No timeouts left for Houston. And you got to take a shot at the end zone. Shaw out of the gun. Shaw looking. Knocked away. Channing Crowder over there, matched up with Andre Davis. And that's why you want to throw it into the end zone, because if it's an in... On third down, 12 seconds remaining. Houston trying to come from behind here. Scott pumping, throwing, and incomplete. Will Allen there defensively. Dealing with Andre Johnson, and it's fourth down with seven seconds left. And Johnson is drawing double coverage, and they're still trying to... This is it. Fourth and two. Seven seconds left. Houston trailing 28 to 23. Shaw, quarterback draw. He's got it. Touchdown, Texans.
just a heads up play for Matt Shaw. He read the defense because look, there's no linebackers here. He knows it's going to open up. It parts like the Red Sea. He reads it and just runs it right in. The spread formation took all the linebackers out of play. And once you get that read, the quarterback knows to keep it and take it into the end zone. The emotions of one week ago for this Houston Texan squad compared to today. Sage Rosenfels last week could not finish the deal against Indianapolis. The backup stepped in for Matt Schaub, who was out with the flu. Today, Matt Schaub, after getting off to a rocky start, has led the Texans back here in the fourth quarter, 29 to 28. Only three seconds remain, and they're going to go for two here. Houston in front, and they're three seconds away from their first win of the season. Job tripped up. Trying to push the pile, but Slayton's going to go down. And the two-point conversion does not work for the Texans.